Salanat Pagi, and welcome to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry, the Let's Try program here on the mighty Loading Ready Live Video Entertainment Network. I'm your host, Ian, and joining me today are a couple of, uh, well, we got a couple different skill levels here. That's... You got Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Hey. I'm, I'm, that, I'm, I'm like you just created a new character on your MMO, <laughs> and the first skill you want to learn is I, I have a N knife. You get, you get a, yeah, you get a, you get a knife as your starting weapon, mm -hmm. and I want to learn how to be cook. Ben, ben how, how hungry are you? I'm a hungry hippo. Kathleen, you are our second guest today. How, how hungry can you make Ben? Uh, I hopefully I can make it pretty. I'm personally very hungry because I've had a very busy day. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, my. Uh, my lunch was a handful of almonds, so I'm extremely ready to cook and eat food. Mm -hmm. So but what we're going to do today is... We're going to cook and eat. Yeah, we're going to cook a trio of recipes that are dead easy to make and something you can make at home with just a single source of heat. Yeah. That's this. These are all, like, I realize there's a plethora of food set out, but the thing is, well, there's a lot of food set out because we're doing a lot of different things and everything here is easy to make, uses Commonly available ingredients, mm -hmm. uh, like, and you can find it any grocery store. I'm not kidding. It's like the most fancy thing on this list is mirin, which is not that hard to find. <laughs> and we'll talk about that when we get to that portion. I don't know of what the that evening. is. Much it's, easier than it used to be. It's a like it's a fortified rice wine essentially. Oh, okay. And it's very important in Japanese cooking. Mm. Uh, lots of Japanese recipes recipes call for mirin. Uh, it's kind of expensive, but you do not use a lot of it, so and think of it as a long-term investment. It stays forever. Yeah, because mm. it's boozy, right? Yep. It's this thing right here. It's a Japanese equivalent of cooking uh, sherry. Yes, I mean, you exactly. Don't wanna, you don't want to drink it even if you are an old pensioner. Can mm -hmm. you get drunk off of mirin? I wouldn't. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you can get drunk off a lot of things, but you shouldn't. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay, but how did this, how did this show come about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, I am... I am not a huge fan of cooking. I, I like I have I, I am aware of how to cook, but um, with how sort of like you know especially with our our our, um, our schedules and whatnot, mm -hmm. we I don't we tend to not have time to sit down and cook like these big awesome meals. And I'm also trying to eat a little bit healthier. And it's sort of like sprung out from like we uh, for me posting in our in our little friend chat. That I'm like today. I made a chicken breasts and chicken breast and an asparagus, and this meal is the most boring thing <laughs> I think I've ever eaten, <laughs> ever. <laughs> and it's just like I think I think healthy. I think chicken breast and I think some form of vegetable. But that that meal was enough to put me in a coma. Mm. I'm sorry, Ben. Does food that's healthy doesn't have to be boring. Food that's healthy can be delicious. Yeah. Food that's healthy doesn't have to be super healthy, but it's still probably better than you <laughs> eating out, yes. right? Like the point being is it's fun. It's like let's. Let, I'm going to teach you how to make three things that are very straightforward and have sort of a veritable health level to them, and they're all delicious. Mm -hmm. And but some of them do require prep. Mm -hmm. So all right, first off. I'm gonna move that. So first off, there's here's the three dishes we're making tonight. We're making Kathleen's semi, like almost authentic oyakudon because I'm not claiming that any of my Japanese cooking is authentic, but it is very good and I really like it and it's super easy to make. Uh, I will be making my suspiciously good cauliflower soup. Uh, the most of the ingredients you see here. Don't I'm really excited <laughs> by that name. Yeah, I was like, I don't know about any food, like meal that has suspiciously in okay, it. Okay, here's the deal with suspiciously good. Uh, I said this during checkpoint. Plain cauliflower is kind of a trash tier vegetable, especially raw. Yeah. Uh, it but doesn't even smell that good. It smells a little like brassica y. Yeah, I've heard though you can make chicken nuggets. You can make lots of great I'm, things with cauliflower. Wow, I haven't heard that. Yeah, yeah. And you can there's make very no good food better than chicken nuggets. Hmm. With cauliflower. Yeah. The, uh, the other thing that I'm going to be making is showing how to make people a, uh, a blistered uh, tomato and uh, roast vegetable warm chicken salad. Oh, now, here's the thing. Good. People think that salads are boring. Yes. Because most salads are, in fact, quite boring. The boring. Very boring. But here's the deal, and I can't stress this enough, warm salad. You put what? warm vegetables or warm chicken on your salad, and yes, it makes your salad greens a little wilty. Right. But the trade-off for having a warm meal with well-blended flavors and a variety of stuff is so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I am a, I am a convert to them. I've come across it. Like, first I was like, that is not okay. Yeah, I don't I mean, like that. But then after, like, doing it for myself, 
Warm salad is always better. It's like you say, Ben. There's, no, there's nothing more boring than than chicken breast. Mm -hmm. No, cold chicken breast. Cold chicken breast. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Leftover cold chicken breast yeah. that you heat up in the microwave. Or that you okay, have intentionally so made cold to put yeah. on the salad. I got so, I got some talking. I want to do vote ingredients. Okay. So, but before we start, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk us through. I'm gonna assume that we have this is sort of a beginning cooking show. Sorry, uh, Justin. Before you start, I have a feeling. Batteries. Oh, are the batteries in my? Uh, what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm actually very intrigued to get like warm lettuce like to be good because mm -hmm. uh, I I don't know if I've told this story before, but I went to a Halloween party of sorts, and then afterwards we went for um, uh, brunch the next day, and uh, I was like, oh man, they have this super, uh, they have this uh, duck eggs Benny, oh. and it seemed seemed super delicious, and everyone else was getting like hash browns and stuff on the side, and I'm mm -hmm. like, cool, I'm gonna order this, it looks like it's gonna be delicious, and it comes with, you know, this delicious looking duck eggs Benny, and a side of hot kale. <laughs> Just a big old plate of uh, kale with like onions on it. It was, Ooh, it was, that... it had caramelized onions mixed in. That yeah. sounds good. I've actually, cause I was at this brunch, mm. in defense of Nomad, mm -hmm. You were very hungover. Yes, yeah, and that's the thing, right? Is like I'm sure, and I mean that's kind of how you eat kale, right? A lot of the times, it's like you cook it uh, and stuff. Like, yeah, I like thought kale about and spinach are. Tipi you have to cook. cook. Yeah, well, no, they're they're also used. In kale salad. can be done. I, if you raw. okay, here's here's my kale salad tip, which I got from my friend Lindsay. You toss the kale with salt, and then you really like really bust it up with your hands mm -hmm. to break down the cell the cellulose in the kale. And the salt helps break it up. And then if you leave it to sit for a couple minutes after you've done that and then toss your salad, mm -hmm. uh, then it gets tender and edible. Yep. You can't just eat raw kale. Yeah. Uh, so that's my kale preparation tip. But let's first talk about, now that my microphone is back on, let's talk about cauliflower. Mm -hmm. This is a cauliflower. Cauliflowers are great this time of year because they're in season and they are cheap. It's like two for five dollars if you want cauliflower. Uh, so cauliflower is, once beige gets focused up, you'll see as a white vegetable and it's got these green stalks at the bottom. This has been in the bottom of my fridge for a while, so it's maybe not the freshest cauliflower, but this doesn't matter. Because it's going in a soup. Yeah. So that bottom part is not going to be eaten. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you'll notice that cauliflower sometimes get brown spots like this. That is not mold, that is oxidiz oxidization. Yeah. Your cauliflower is totally fine. Brown spots are fine to eat. You can cut them out if you find them aesthetically yep. displeasing, but there's no need to. It does nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what I want you to do, Ben? Yes. Is I want you to knife. I want you to do some knifing. <laughs> yeah. Knife time. I'm all about that knife. Oh, good. But I first, I'm going to show everybody how to get the bottom out of a cauliflower, which is actually really straightforward. Ooh. Uh, uh, let's get that. Yeah, we got the overhead camera there. Oh, perfect. So, first, I'm just going to use one of these green bowls for. Discarding first, let's get rid of all of these leaves, which are technically edible. I will remind people, but I don't like doing it. I just take them off. You can compost them. You can feed them to birds or iguanas, pigs, any kind of animals you have around your house. I like that iguanas are higher up on the list than pigs. I mean, I had an iguana for a while. Did you really? Yeah. Oh. I got it. They're huge. <laughs> yes. I mean, they can Especially get it. when you feed them a good amount of uh, <laughs> good, good, I thought, I, good I, amount I, of cauliflower. I thought that was Baxter. No. <laughs> so well, Baxter, that, is it an iguana? Baxter grew, Baxter grew hair. So what <laughs> I'm doing tell. is I have my knife and I'm sticking it sort of into the cauliflower. This isn't the sharpest knife. Oh no, it isn't. So this is maybe not as safe as I want it to be, but I'm I'm sort of sticking it in as an at an angle because what I want to do is remove that central stalk, which like is edible. Let's see. There you go. That just then pops right out. Nice. Ooh, you want to toss that this way? Yeah. This like, is how edible these are. Yeah, it's edible, but it's tough. It's a little chewy. Mm. You know what? When you get to the heart, good and tender. So, but then I'm just taking off that bottom stalk. That's what is cut at the farm. So that's, you want to, I've rinsed my cauliflower, so you can see it's spraying water everywhere. And, and then. And Ian, eating a cauliflower heart can also be used. If you need like bone breaking uh, foley, <laughs> mm. that, yeah. that, that works out quite nicely. Cauliflowers are pretty uh, common in foley, I understand. Oh, yeah. really? So Ca that. Kalima. There was, I know I said there's brown spots. This, that was a soft spot on the cauliflower, so I'm just cutting, I just cut that out. It's probably edible, but like I'm just being fastidious here. So, Ben, yes. what I want you to do, okay. this is a very simple job. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> Those are my favorite kind of jobs. I just want you to take the cauliflower, yeah. cut it in half, yeah. cut it in quarters, cut it into chunks. Do okay. they have to be small chunks? Not particularly. All right. And then throw them into the pot. Okay. I'm going to move the induction plate just a mm -hmm. bit up here so I got some room here. Okay. So let's, so basically this is, I got to stand to cook. I can't sit and cook. It's weird to me. So basically we're doing cauliflower soup. And the, the nice thing about a cauliflower soup like this is that it's very simple to prepare. You can buy cut pre-cut up cauliflower at the grocery store if you're lazy and you have more money this than is, time. This is the creative side of the cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, it does so look very brain-like. It is very brain-like. It is very brain-like. Brain -like. brain -like. And there's lots of things that you can do to add to this cauliflower soup um, if you want to put in the effort. For yeah, example, make, before you start cooking the cauliflower, you could fry up a few slices of bacon. Hey. You could take that bacon out. You could chop it up and reserve it for the end. You could do some onions. You mm -hmm. could do all sorts of things. But this is very, this is absolutely serviceable and actually tastes delicious. The next thing you're going to do is you're not cooking it in water. Wh because wait, what? What? No, we're going to cook it in stock. Or in this case, uh -huh. bouillon cubes. How like how how small, by the way, is like chunks? That's perfect. Yeah. This, yeah, okay. It's cool. beginning to be boiled, so don't worry about like preserving the integrity of the florets. We're gonna get it real soft, and we're, then we're gonna mash it up with a blender. All right. Yeah. Sounds so good. we're we're gonna cook it in in chicken stock, or in this case, bouillon, because that adds a lot of flavor, and it's very tasty, mm -hmm. and uh, it adds uh, a little bit of salt, which you're gonna want to add to your food anyhow. So this is important that you don't put salt in at any point in the cooking process, because you'll have plenty of salt. Thanks to your chicken bouillon. Park Light Dynamo, I'll make sure that we get those recipes posted up to the Loading Ready Run uh, forums for Tinker Taylor Soldier Fry. So you yeah. can check them out there. Sweet. So I know it looks like I'm holding a bunch of like generic bouillon cubes, but this is actually a brand of bouillon that you can buy. At least I know in Canada, it's like McCormick bouillon, and what it is is actually vegetable based, but mm. it tastes like chicken. And I ah. use this because it's a very good bouillon, and it means that this is a vegetarian-friendly recipe. Sweet. And there if we you go. wanted to leave out this step, which I think is actually a very good step, but a little bit of cream, this is a vegan recipe. Mm -hmm. So hey, if you have any food restrictions, you have people coming over with food restrictions, it's great times. So that's it. That is literally all of the stuff that we need to do here. So uh, the other thing I'm going to talk about while Ben is finishing chopping that cauliflower, and you can just throw it into the pot, is I'm going to go through. Like not make as much of a mess, which is causing like. There's a lot just of people asking to correct your knife technique, and we'll. That's not for this show. I mean, is we've it, shown people I'm knife like, technique. You, you put your finger, your your your, your fingernails. It's not that down. bad. Yeah. yeah, the idea is to is to try and curl, curl your, fingertips your fingers so okay. that you're not you don't have something that can get chopped. I've but. never chopped my fingers before, and I know how to. Oh God, now <laughs> it is. Yeah, now 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 you're aware. Okay. The other thing I want to talk about while Ben is chopping, but Ben is making short work of this cauliflower, is uh is a uh, chicken. Uh, both of the recipes I'm doing tonight are not using chicken breast. Why? Because chicken breast is expensive, and mm -hmm. I don't think it tastes very good. Yes. Uh -huh. it's, it has its place. It has its place. If you're gonna, if you are wanting to do something with chicken breast. I recommend poaching your chicken breast, which is for another show. <laughs> poaching is a good way to guarantee a moist, tender chicken breast because you're actually just cooking it in water. Ooh, hey, that's a, we should really just have a, a chicken breast cook-off then. Oh, we should. I have my own go-to chicken breast. Okay, but, but that's for another day. But uh, um, so the both of the recipes I'm calling for tonight are calling for boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and I'm and there's a couple of reasons behind that. One, they taste better. I just that's just fact. I think like uh, chicken breast can be good if prepared well, but it, it's very easy to make dry. Two, they're cheaper. Three, at least for Japanese cooking, you don't see a lot of chicken breasts running around in there. You are no. seeing chicken thigh. Uh, they are the like they that is the meat. When you get an oyakodon, you're getting dark meat chicken. And uh, yeah. the dark I think, meat's better. I mean, if you don't like dark meat, if you don't like it, feel free to use chicken breast. But I just think. Uh, if you're like, I want to eat healthy, I want to eat more lean protein chicken, even chicken thigh, well, not as lean as chicken breast, better for you than beef, leaner than pork. Uh, I think it's important to, uh, I think it's, it's, you can say, I'm going to do chicken thigh. All right. So, Ben, that's yes. great. You're done. You're done. The, right. you're, you're doing an exceptional chopping job. You're doing more than you need to. Throw oh. all of that in the pot. Okay. I'm gonna, I should probably take my ring off for this. <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing my ring. Married to the job. Okay. Wow. Where did that Looking kettle of water good. go? Put all this, put all this brain oh, food. Oh, it's behind you. Oh, perfect. 
Oh, this is just gonna fit. What? Perfect. <laughs> we'll have to clean the studio after yep. this. Yep, give it an old vacuum. It's pretty standard for kids. Is that? Yes. Yeah. It's At least of... it's not sawdust. Yeah. I mean, this is only the first dish. Who knows? <laughs> this is definitely the messiest dish. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the reason we're starting with this dish is there's an order of operations when you're preparing food, and that is you always do your meat last. So we're starting with the vegetable dishes. Right. Pulled meat is nobody's friend. Is, you know, is that just because uh, meat tends to be more picky about cooking time? Uh, no, uh, because you don't want to chop up meat and then chop up vegetables, and the vegetables don't get cooked as long as the meat, and then you get food poisoning. Mm. Ah. That's just a food safe thing, is if you have one cutting board and one knife, you always do your vegetables first and your meat last. That's just just, just for your health. So mm. that's why I wanted to get the soup started, um, because it's a vegetable choppy thing. And I didn't want to have to st stop to uh, interrupt the show and go you get like go take this to the sink, soap and water, blah, blah, blah. All right, can I get the overhead camera, please? <laughs> this is a very precise recipe. I have, let me just, nope, wrong way. It's. I, unless you want to, of course, there's always you know cauliflower poisoning, or yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, the the terrible bell pepper disease. <laughs> Cauliflower's poisonous. So this is a, an extremely precise recipe, as you're about to see, because I've added one head of cauliflower, at random size. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a fairly large head because cauliflower, where I live, is not sold by weight; it's sold by uh, just sold by unit, unit price. Mm. So I literally always go for the largest head of cauliflower yeah. because I'm cheap. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, so, but you know, whatever. <clears throat> I would estimate, if I had to guess, I'd say this would be about six cups of cauliflower. <laughs> but uh, the the water here is very precise. I just have it in a kettle because it's a good thing to hold water in because there's no plumbing in the studio. Mm -hmm. You're gonna just about cover. You don't want to totally cover. That's it. Okay. This is this is very easy. It requires no precise measuring. I'm just going to take care of the compost here. Then, bouillon. And I do kind of have an idea of how much I added. Uh, 1.8. So I added maybe just about 1.6, maybe one and a half liters of water there. So that's, I would say, six cups of water. So these bouillon cubes, obviously check with your own bouillon recipe. Uh, is one per two cups of water. Okay. So I'm going to add. Now, go with me on this journey. <laughs> I'm ready. Nobody I'm adding... said there'd be math. Yeah. No, hold on. But check. I'm adding four. And why? Hmm. Because that is extra. And yes, it's salt. So hmm. That's why we're not adding any salt to this recipe. But it's a little extra flavor and a little bit of extra richness. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So always, maybe if you're doing cubes, overdo your cubes. Uh, this is quite a large amount of soup because I'm doing a whole head of cauliflower. Typically, I do like half for like me and Graham. Yeah. So you now you want to like maybe add just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I kind of generally, generally, you tend to over bullion my things anyway. Uh, Most things. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's uh, p people rarely complain about over seasoning a dish and it's very easy because the thing is we're the the cauliflower has no salt in it the water has no salt in it and we're also adding more liquid after <laughs> this we're adding cream which will also cut down the saltiness it's all like you know stop like error on the side of caution is a thing but it's very it's very hard to over season a dish and it's very easy to under season a dish and if you stop and if you go to a fancy restaurant and you think why is this so delicious because there's a lot of butter and salt in it. Mm -hmm. The goal of seasoning in professional cooking yeah. is to, I believe they said you want to aim to the level where you're not sure if it needs more or if you put too much in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so like you know you can you can throw caution to the wind, and if you're like no I can't do it I can't I can't add more bouillon than I think I should, you know what you can also always do is you can always add more later. Mm. Uh, but I'm fairly confident on how this works. So do you? Uh, do you always make this with uh, with bouillon, or yeah. if you do, do you have a good homemade chicken stock? Make it with that. Mm -hmm. but do I often have that on hand? No. Is this fifty times cheaper than buying like the carton of ready-made <laughs> chicken stock? Oh, yes. That's yeah. that's a big that, part of it. That's, is that in that is that any better for this purpose? No. There are times when I will go with a, 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 a fancy pre-made chicken stock, but not for something like this. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, this, is, uh, this is basically, like, if you want to go for it, go for it. But it's so, it's, 
so much more expensive to buy chicken stock that way. I just can't justify the price mm -hmm. unless I was doing something like now. Ian, you'd maybe agree with me on this. If you're doing some sort of like showpiece risotto for a show-off thing, that's exactly the sort of uh, the sort of instance where I would. Or if I was doing a risotto, I would yeah. probably get some better chicken stock. Because for this, there's so cream, okay. there's cauliflower, which has a strong flavor. You're looking for something nourishing and hearty with a risotto, where the whole point is the rice is slowly cooked and absorbing yeah. this flavor. Like all the flavors coming from your stock, you want the best stock possible. Correct, because risotto has no flavor on its own. For mm -hmm. this or chili, I'm just going to yeah, it's going to be, prob it's probably going to be from the bulk barn. Just, yeah. just spoon it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that. All right. So that has to come up to a boil. Then we're going to leave it alone. So while that's happening, let's start talking about some other things that we're going to cut up. We're going to chop, we're going to prep all our vegetables. Uh, so uh, do we have a pan? We don't have, do we have any tin foil? That's just for cleanup. It doesn't make the, anything yeah. cook faster. Yeah, um, I'm lazy and uh, I like the idea of just like putting a piece of tin foil down and then you pull up the tin foil. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. makes it yeah. easier to it clean. Makes everything easier to clean. I, I got one of those. Um, those like mats, oh, yeah, kind of a thing. Mats. Yeah, yeah, they're super really nice. Good. I'm a huge <laughs> proponent, huge proponent of uh, parchment paper. Ah, yes, the stuff that lights on fire. <laughs> it uh, can <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> like if you go about 375, I think. Or if you yeah. touch the touch the element, to yeah. the element. Yeah. Parchment paper is great for cookies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, never cook with wax paper. Nope. It's not the same. <laughs> not at all. One uses silicon. One uses, well, wax. Mm. Oh, I didn't wash these tomatoes or this bell pepper. Ben, I might send you to the negazone to wash some tomatoes for me. I can do that. So I live in the negazone. How about I, I, how about I, I'll do that. Okay. okay. If you could wash that while I chop up onion and yep. go talk about knife skills. This is for our next dish, which is a warm salad. Mm. Uh, so that's Campari tomatoes, which are a very nice tomato, well chosen, Ian. And a bell pepper because I figure people like those vegetables, and we're gonna show a little bit of onion in there. Oh man, we're gonna cry. I mean, I'm probably not gonna cry, but yeah. So, how to cut up an onion? Can I get the overhead camera again? Okay, mm -hmm. first, cut off that knobbly end at the end. Get out of here, knobbly end. Piss off. Nobody likes you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then do the other knobbly end. Your parents are disappointed in you. They're not wasting that much onion. It's okay. <laughs> now your onion lays flat. That's just for safety. I hope this is cooking. Oh yeah, there's steam coming off the top. Okay. So straight down the middle. Because you actually don't ever need to use as much onion as you think you need to do. Onion's mm. a strong flavor. A little yeah. bit goes a long way. A lot of people don't even like it. I know Graham hates it and I have to sneak it into dishes. Mm -hmm. oh, really? so we're, yeah. Onion? Yeah. Oh, I love onion. Onion's well, my jam. I, mean, cooked, I eat it raw. Like, cooked, cooked onion, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Mm. I love it's onion all. raw. I just take a big old bite out of it. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm impressed. So we're going to peel off the skin, but also you see that how this layer, that's a bit hard to see on the overhead, this layer is a little green, Ben, and you can feel it. It feels kind of like right. not as crispy as an onion. Okay. Get rid of that layer, too. Get out of there. Don't want that. Because that's just going to end up being like a chewy leaf. Ah. It's not going to soften up and get delicious like an onion. Mm -hmm. You want the flesh. The fleshy flesh. Okay. Get out I of here, onion skin. I think with onions, you can just be like, this layer kind of sucks. Next layer. Oh, mm. this layer is yeah. okay. Next okay. layer. Okay, this one's good. So, so you cut it in half and you peeled off half. the bad layers. I cut it in half and I peeled off the bad layers. Now I'm going to do, oh, this knife is maybe not as nice as I want it to be. Now I need to do some very thin onion for my oyakudon. So. And what kind of your, what's your favorite shape of onion to eat? Aside from that, Ben, do you like chunks of onion? Typically, yeah. I mean, but I mean, I'm 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 honestly not too picky. Like, it depends on what I'm eating. Like, if you're eating a burger or something like that, having like the rings and whatnot, it's probably the best way. But um, yeah, if it's in like a stir fry or something, I'll typically cube it. One medium onion. Done. Yeah. Ben likes onion. I like onion. Ian likes onion. Yeah, we all about that onion life. Okay. Here's a bowl. Okay. And so I'm going to add, this onion is for the oyakudon, which is why it's very thin mm -hmm. and a different shape. But that seems like a nice amount of onion. Okay. Now, let's do some... Tomat. Some tomatus. So these are... So the onion wasn't for the salad? The onion is for the salad, but some of this onion is for a different dish. Some onion for the salad, some onion for the third dish. Yeah. How do you feel about tomatoes? 
Um, I'm actually not a huge fan of them, but I can eat them fine. I'm okay. not too picky, as long as they're done correctly. Kathleen, there's a compost bag for you. Cool. Um, tomatoes are much better if they're cooked. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, raw tomatoes are like, okay. <laughs> Sometimes raw tomatoes are very good, like a little cherry tomato, the mm -hmm. So, I'm going to keep our salad rustic. Okay. Big, big thick that, pieces. That or would you guys prefer smaller pieces? I'm fine with big chunks. Rustic is a technical cooking term that means big chunks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this knife is not as dull as I thought. Not as sharp as I want it to be, but it's fine. It's doing the job. It's cutting things in half. Ooh, okay. We'll be we'll be turning the tomatoes over to cut them. There's mm. a there's a if you don't have a very sharp knife. Oh yeah, that happens. I see. That happens, but all like start cutting your tomatoes, but then like cut them. Cut them inside, like have pass the ins, That's do fine. the inside up, mm -hmm. so you can uh, so you can actually cut them, and not just squish them and like break the skin and not do anything. Yeah, nobody wants a big old squishy tomato. So Ian got fairly large tomatoes, which are Campari tomatoes are good. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you don't like the flavor of tomatoes, what you probably have experienced in your life is beefsteak tomatoes, a.k.a. the thing that people invented to make other people think they didn't like tomatoes. <laughs> don't buy those. No? They're almost never good. Yes, they're cheap, but they're not tasty. They're not. They're usually not picked when they're ripe. They're bred to be large and easily... Oh, like the big tomatoes. Yeah. So is this like a standard tomato size? Uh, it's a much more natural tomato yep. size. Oh, because I always thought like the big dudes were like so, the tomato. No, so, stop so, buying those. So what you're okay. saying is the big tomatoes uh, or the beefsteak tomatoes were bred by tomato lovers mm. to give no. to other no to give to other people to convince them <laughs> not yeah, to, to eat. so so that they so, they, so they that, stay off their jam. Yeah. 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 I mean, in the night, well, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> Goddamn Here. tomato conspiracy. Here's here's some trivia. After the rise of grocery stores in the 1940s and 50s, they realized that it was very difficult to put uh, to get farm fresh produce to to consumers in the middle of the suburbs when they were far away from the farms. Mm. So they started aggressively breeding new kinds of fruits and vegetables that would travel better and that looked nice and that tasted awful. Party for transport and can be ripened at the. Inside the Don't trust hole. big tomato. No. Yeah. Literally. Down with big tomato. No. Basi basically, this is your beefsteak tomatoes. This is your red delicious apples. This is... Uh, what are some other really bad offenders? I mean... Uh, red delicious... I feel like red delicious apples have actually kind of started to be... Uh, Russet potatoes? Mm. Russet potatoes. That's another good one. Like, these are... These, these are not... You don't see these in grocery stores because they are the best tasting examples of their breeds. You don't see these in grocery stores because uh, people like them or enjoy eating them or they cook particularly well or they have particular nice textures. What they are is easy to transport. Sorry, Paul, you were, you were going to... Uh, well, I was going to say, like, I, feel, I feel like red delicious uh, apples have, in the last couple of years, I've, I've noticed that they, they, I feel like they've been redeemed a little bit. Like they seem to be, if, when I go to the store and see red delicious apples now, they seem to be a little bit more not just the the giant perfect uh, uh, symmetrical color of red thing, but they actually have some you know flavor and they're not so uh, not so bad anymore. Mm. There is one caveat though to uh, the big tomato rule, mm. and that's if you can get a hold of irregularly shaped. Big tomatoes. Ah, yes, the heirloom tomatoes. Yes. Okay. Or okay. things from. Uh, Are, so they're like tomatoes that have been passed down through the generations. <laughs> well, tomato breeds that have been ah. that, that haven't been bred to be farmed tomatoes. Gotcha. So yeah. They're, most they're often advertised, at least here, as heirloom tomatoes, yeah. but they're like they have weird shapes. They're like streaky in color. They're not one color. Mm, they're, okay. Uh, like you'll see them and you'll recognize them because not only will they look weird and be irregular, but they will be three times the price of a. Uh, yep. Generally, the the uh, the rule of thumb for produce in the grocery in the grocery store is mm -hmm. smaller is generally more flavorful. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good. Concentrate the it's sort of the same amount of flavor in a smaller. That's really right. what it is. Well, yeah. more than anything else. Yeah, I, I almost exclusively buy uh, cherry tomatoes and grape tomatoes. Yeah, I've had a lot of cherry tomatoes in salads. 
So yeah. I mean, they're more salad sized. Mm -hmm. yeah, I wasn't sure exactly how we were, uh, what, what exactly what we were cooking. I just said so. some small tomatoes because I wasn't gonna like specify I want grape or I how want cherry. How small is small? But yes. grape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you right. do you have any? Do either of you have any strong opinions about uh, the like? Organic versus regular stuff. Mm. I, it used to be that organic I had the same. This might be different in Canada whether in the U.S. too. Like the yeah the 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 classifications are a little bit weird. I used to live across the street from an organic market, and I typically found that it was like I guess slightly tastier, but uh, not worth couple... not worth like the extra like. Seven dollars I had to lot pay. Of it's a placebo effect. Yeah, yeah that's, I know that's that some people thing. swear by organic bananas as being better. I don't mm -hmm. find organic apples to be particularly better, especially now that we have, you know, in the second wave of breeding food, especially for, yes. uh, mm -hmm. especially for like eating, we've invented like new kinds of apples, like Honeycrisp, mm -hmm. uh, that are bred for flavor and transport. and texture mm -hmm. and and. Oh, Honeycrisp apples. They changed my mind on apples. Mm -hmm. I love apples again. Mm. Um, so, like, stuff like that. So, I don't really find a big difference uh, in that. Uh, I don't typically buy organic produce because it's much more expensive. Yeah. yeah. And if you can for buy its cost is a concern. Some, some of each other is, and Beach as well mentioned, buy, if you can buy local, yeah. generally better because then, you're, then you know that the food you're getting is in season. And more than anything else, that's what you want to go for is food that is in season because that means that it's not necessarily being produced for storage or transport. It means it's right. ready to eat. Yeah. Okay. Please eat it now. Yeah, mm. and if it came from a farmer down the street for you, uh, yes, it's probably better if it doesn't have pesticides on it or it has only organic pesticides because organic doesn't mean pesticide free. It just means approved pesticides. Mm. Don't be confused. Well, don't be fooled. I gotta Big say pesticide, the, down. I'm, I'm pretty sure the certification <laughs> for organic is different in different spots, so mm. who yeah. knows. But for example, uh, when you were uh, doing your asparagus. Great. It w I, I looked at that and I thought, ooh, no, good choice, good vegetable. Mm -hmm. But asparagus is very out of season right now. So oh. all of the asparagus you're going to find is going to be woody and overly large. Yeah. What you want is that fresh new asparagus that's just poked through the ground. Right. Really thin but still crisp because it's just been delivered. Okay. I'm going to take the lid off this now. Mm -hmm. uh, just it's boiling. It's going. This is, a, this is a rowdy boy. It's getting sm sm smoked. So up I've cut up. A bell pepper, because people like bell peppers. It's not an entire bell pepper. I don't think we need a whole bell pepper. Like four tomatoes and some onion. It smells mm. really good. I mean, it's chicken stock. Plus yeah. It smells good. Uh, but we're cooking also the, the stinky brassica in this out of our cauliflower, which mm. is good. Uh, and then I'm going to... Could you pass me my olive oil, Ian? Yes, indeed. This is... Always buy the best olive oil you can afford to buy. For me, this is... You can get these two liters of, of organic extra virgin... Uh, olive oil at Costco because it's like two liters for like $17 and it's a pretty good olive oil. Mm -hmm. So you're pouring that just to kind of over the veggies? I am pouring it over the veggies because what we're going to do is we're going to broil our veggies. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to add, this is coarse salt and I actually believe in coarse salt even though it seems like a very fancy cook thing. It's not that expensive. I'm going to add a good pinch of coarse salt mm -hmm. to our vegetables. I like Still. coarse salt. People like I think it's. I think it. I think it enhances a dish. It's not that expensive. It's easy to keep. Generally, cool. not much expensive at all. I, I personally prefer kosher salt. It's mm. because you're getting more surface area. Yeah. This is. This is. This is sea salt from France. Ooh. My dad got it for me. Nice. So uh, mm. that's the salt I'm using, and it's like a year, at least a year's supply <laughs> of salt. Even though I put in a, like, when I say a big pinch, I'm talking like a three finger pinch. So like that's mm -hmm. three of my fingers and my thumb, and it's like. <laughs> So that's it. That's all I really need to do is because when you're browning vegetables, if you just throw them into the oven, they're going to shrivel. And what you want them to do is you want them to cook and get browned and sort of get caramelized. And you need olive oil to do that. Did we find? Oh, we did find aluminum foil. Baller. Yes. Yeah. Aluminum foil does nothing to the cooking process, but it just makes uh, cleanup easier. Can you pass me some aluminum foil? Sure thing. Where's the start? Probably enough. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Just enough to coat the inside of that baking pan. Mm-hmm. 
something that I have I have heard uh, differing accounts on. Uh, for for olive oil, like you, know, you have a, the big container of olive oil there. I I've heard that olive oil does have not necessarily a shelf life in terms of its usefulness, but in terms of its uh, uh, freshness, its freshness and its um, positive effects and stuff like that, its health benefits yeah mm. that, it, that if you if you have like a, a giant thing of olive oil and you're not using that much mm. that at a certain point it's uh it's gonna have lost most of its positive effects and it's just kind of yeah. i don't believe i've ever heard food that mm. <laughs> uh, i mean realistically oil is not something you should be eating because you think it's going to make you healthy anyhow uh <laughs> and it can go rancid it yes, can. it can. Okay. But it, 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 keep it in a dark place. Keep it in a air-free place. Yeah. So is I keep mine above the stove, though, because that's like where I need it. Mm. Mm. No bad place. Eh, I go through it quickly enough. Heat changes. Mm. How, so how long does the cauliflower go for? Okay, how long the cauliflower go for is until it's done. And you know it's done when it's tender and easily and it's mashable. quite tender, but not quite tender enough. This doesn't actually take very long. But I'm going to let it get a little bit more tender. Okay. So, like, is the soup going to have, like, chunks of cauliflower in it? No. Oh. It's a puree. Mm -hmm. so yeah. That's what this immersion wonder is for. I just ah. Yeah. But we'll get there. So, I guess if you cool. do it a little right. right. if, I guess if you do it a little long, you aren't going to miss anything. Absolutely yeah. not. It's not like the texture of the cauliflower is going to actually matter at all. And no. Uh, cauliflower, now, now, let's talk a little bit about food science, about why this, this soup turns out well. Cauliflower has an incredible incredible amount of fiber in it. Cauliflower is one of the most fiber-rich vegetables you can get. So not only is this soup very tasty and very inexpensive and possibly vegan, uh, and uh, it's also incredibly healthy for you because fiber is good and most people need more fiber in their diet. I do need more fiber. Good, good for and the poops. It's good for, it's good for <laughs> your colon I'll let, health. I'll let you read into that internet. <laughs> uh, so that is uh, so the nice thing about that is because cauliflower has so much fiber in it when you puree it it gets really thick and has a wonderful texture and makes you think that you're eating something that's much richer than you mm, are okay uh, so yeah it's good basically there's so much fiber in this that when we puree it it's not going to be like chunks of vegetable like ground up, it's going to get, it's actually going to thicken in on itself and you're going to have like a fiber suspension. Fun uh -huh. fact, you don't need to eat like hulls of seeds or stringy celery to get your fiber. Mm -hmm. Nope. Lots of vegetables cool. have it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, immersion blenders. Mm -hmm. This is not a very expensive one. My dad gave it to me several years ago. He got it at um, Superstore. I think it was maybe like 30 or 40 bucks. You don't need to spend a lot of money oh, on an immersion blender. They are much less than that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> They're cheap, and uh, they don't work for some things, but they work for a surprising amount of things. And honestly, considering how, how little space they take up, I do recommend them as one of those sort of not very useful, but actually useful kitchen yeah. gadgets that's worth having around and taking up space. Right. I'd say, if you are short on space and money, immersion blender, food processor, regular blender. Mm -hmm. as if, mm. Don't go for that regular blender ever? I mean, unless you like drinking a lot of smoothies. I'm, right. Yeah, that's, I, I think, the big reason. If, if you are big into that sort of culture, go with the blender, but get a good blender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a bad blender, and it's probably worse than no blender at all. It was a gift. Yeah. The number one thing I look, like to look for in all of my appliances is how easy is it to clean? And this uh. one, uh, if I can have a look at that blender side, I like this one because all the metal parts are sealed, so you're not going to be getting, there's less chance for things to end up inside right, of this Right, that just like don't get out when you're cleaning. And lots of open space to be able to get a brush in there if you need to. How does one immersion blend? We're about to do it in a couple seconds. Oh, okay. snap, okay. You might even get to do it. No, Ben is totally going to do it. No, oh, all right. definitely going to do it. I'm looking forward to Where'd it. Where'd I put my wooden spoon down? You just mm -hmm. stick it in the, in the pot no, and it was this one. spin it around. Take it and make it go. Yeah. I need to specify pot. So there's a lot of people talking about different oils in the chat there too, and I, def I, I do agree with most of what I'm seeing here. Generally, you're, it's good to have a variety of oils in your kitchen. Oh, I have canola oil at home when I don't care about the flavor and I need something with a high smoke point, because well, you can't fry anything in olive oil. And generally, yeah, when you're, when you're cooking, with, when you're using your oil as a heat transfer liquid, 
Yeah, you want to use something like canola, which has a high smoke point, or avocado, which also has a high smoke point if you want to be fancy. Avocado is so expensive, though. It is, mm -hmm. but it's so good for frying. Peanut oil is good, too, provided you're not allergic. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, your, your extra virgin olive oil, generally you want to keep that for when you are going to be tasting the oil. Yeah, and the okay. thing is, all of these vegetables that we're tossing and broiling, the only seasoning is going to be the vegetables, the oil, and the salt, and then the chicken. The yeah. chicken. We're, so you can taste the oil. We're not. Yeah, we're we use a lot of uh, cooking. This is sort of a par cooking. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, like we uh, in, or at least my roommate uses a lot of coconut oil. Mm -hmm. It's like we've got like one of those like big tub things of coconut oil. Because you can like, use coconut because it's solid at room temperature, so you can use it to do all sorts of fun vegan baking tricks. Yeah, yeah. For those of you who aren't vegan, though, save your bacon grease when you're for, when you're cooking bacon, because that is an amazing cooking oil. So when you save the bacon grease, do you put it in, you put it in the freezer? A fridge. A just fridge? The fr just the fridge yeah. is enough okay, to, uh, okay. it, it solidifies it. Okay, cool. Got to have more bacon, then. What else is good? And don't be afraid yeah. of lard. Lard is also good. Yeah, if you, if you ever run out of oil, just start cooking as much bacon as you can. <laughs> bacon doesn't need oil. One of these days, it's self lubricating. Yeah, yeah. self lubricating meat. I'll have to check to see if uh, we, if our oven here is correct in its temperatures enough for me to try teaching everyone the bacon method. Yeah. For cooking the bacon, bacon in this, method. Mm -hmm. it's actually quite easy. Um, I always cook my bacon in the oven. Yeah, it's lay down a lay, lay down a pan, put your uh, your paper on it, parchment mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. Lay down your bacon mm -hmm. in strips, flat. Put it into the oven cold. Oh, interesting. And set it, your oven to four hundred. Okay. And then set a timer for I believe it's fifty minutes. Mm -hmm. Right. Check at that point. Okay. Th because oh, ovens are notoriously. Different. Yeah, throughout exactly. all. yeah your yeah. oven when it says 400 is maybe not actually telling you the truth. And the time it takes to get the 400 is a different story. But mm -hmm. at that point, you should be able to see whether or not it's starting to cook or it might actually be fully cooked at that point. Okay. But at that point, you can then say, the, the bacon's going to be cooked. Is it to my desired crispiness level? Because some people like really soggy bacon. Yeah. But, but some people like like bacon that like shatters and that's yeah. also bad. Yeah, but no. <laughs> I love crispy bacon. But I like a bit of chew. I like some tooth. To this my is bacon. why you got to ch check at ten minutes. But at that point, that you can sense. tell. Keep an eye on how much longer it's going to take, and your bacon is done. Yeah. And you can just pour that oil off into a bowl. Uh, Cyanide says, I keep a thermometer in my oven. They're usually up to twenty-five degrees off. Mm. Very true. Fahrenheit. Oven thermometers are mm -hmm. are a thing. Yeah, if you're going to get into baking, calibrate your oven. Mm -hmm. Learn, learn how, what it's actually at. Yeah, and I, I'm jumping around because I'm just trying to fill time while this uh, while this uh, goes. You may have noticed that we have our meat sitting out on the counter. Aren't we all going to get food poisoning and die? No. No. Your meat would have to be sitting out on the counter. Obviously, you don't want cross contamination, and you're we're completely cooking our meat, mm -hmm. right? But. If you bring your meat to room temperature, yes. it will cook faster and taste better. Yep. Mm. You're not fighting cold because temperature when you're cooking things, uh, when you're cooking things in a conventional manner, mm -hmm. temperature changes as a gradient. You're adding heat to the outside, and you always want to cook. T that's why you're always supposed to take an interior temperature because that's where your your meat is going to be its coolest, mm -hmm. and so it's going to take time to penetrate the outer layers. If it's cold all the way through, it's going to take more time and you're going to overcook the exterior and maybe end up undercooking the interior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it starts at a lower temperature. So with the, the oven baking, oven bacon uh, stuff, you don't have to like flip it? Nope. At any point? No, not oh. at all. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's it's a big part. That's a big part of how of cooking bacon. It's is just, the bacon flip. Yeah, so no, it's if you can get rid of that, easy. and awesome. it's so much cleaner. Yes. Yeah, you don't have to wipe anything down. Oh, Sick. Yeah. All right. Well, bacon only in the oven. Oven's forever. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna poke our cauliflower soup again because it's getting the the mm. florets are just gonna start crumbling to dust, which is fine. Mm. Uh, but I just want to make sure. Oh, the stems are now breaking. So great. Do we have a trivet? Uh, we do not, but we, we can makeshift one. I mean, uh, I've got some towels I brought in. Uh, actually, they're in, yeah, the towels should be good. Okay, we can, goodbye, turn you off, and then I'm going to get Ian to plug in our immersion blender. Mm. Yep, 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 yep. Does Ben not cook much, or is this a bit? I don't cook much. It's but never like, been, it's never been my skill. thing. Yeah, it's, I think, I mean, obviously I speak as somebody who, uh, 
you know, is on team, doesn't cook very often kind of a thing. But it is definitely something I think that you have to sort of invest yourself in. Ooh, absolutely. Bit, right? So this it is was, why. I, I am aware of how to cook for myself, though I should specify that. This is why it's so expensive. It's very variable. What what oh. is so expensive? The uh, your immersion blender. Mm. Oh yeah, it's got like six different settings. Variable temperatures. I mean t temperatures. Speeds. Speeds. That's the word. All right. So immersion blending is very straightforward. You're gonna stick the stick in, but I, here's a safety tip. This is a very viscous liquid, so it tends to kick up because mm -hmm. it, I talked about all the the fiber and the the there no there's not very much starch in this, but there's a lot of fiber in this, so that's gonna make it quite thick and viscous. So it will kick up. Uh, so what we want to do is we always want to set our immersion blender to a the lowest setting so that mine goes up to six Keep it at one. Mm -hmm. You can do it. And so here's the technique for immersion blending. Yeah Take your blender stick it in once it's in the water you turn it on. Okay, not beforehand Otherwise, you're gonna spray very hot water on yourself. Right. Put a corollary to that Before you take it out turn it off Okay, so you come in and out. It doesn't just like stay in one spot. And I'm bringing it down. I might have added a bit too much water to the soup, but that's also fine. All right, Ben. Yeah. Fuck up that cauliflower. All right. <laughs> I can do it, coach. So you just. That's it. This is actually a lot nicer than like pouring it into a big ass blender. Yeah. Safer, easier, fewer things to clean. Yeah, I mean that's that's a huge part of cooking. Actually, uh, that 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 is something I will say though. Uh, things like uh, uh, cleaning dishes and all that kind of jazz, I've never had an issue with. So I've usually, and like I mean, in 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 a lot of relationships or you know, uh, in like living arrangements that I've been in, um, people will do the cooking, and I'm like, yo, fuck me up on those dishes, man, because like <laughs> I I find actually like cleaning very th therapeutic for myself. Mm. So. I'm one of those people who likes to clean as I go because yeah. I absolutely hate the aspect of when I'm done eating, I want to be done for the night. Uh, yeah, I think also from being like solo chefs, you have to clean as you go because otherwise it's so demoralizing to have a mountain of dishes after you're done eating because you've, you've just spent an hour cooking. Also because I generally don't, don't start cooking until I'm done this show, which means I'm not starting cooking until about 9.30. Yeah, uh, or I've always been a late eater. So uh, if we can go back to the overhead. For a second, I think it's gonna be hard to tell, but do you see how much that? Do you see? That's why. That, do you yeah. see how thick that soup has gotten? Yes. It's similar. It's kind of like an applesauce, or similar to like potato soup. It's the same deal, basically. Yeah. You could do if you don't like cauliflower. If you're like morally opposed to cauliflower, you could easily do this with potatoes and leeks, and that would be a vichyssoise. Mm -hmm. Is the technical name for that soup. Uh, you could do this with squash. You could do this with broccoli. Although I don't find broccoli makes as nice of texture. No, but boy, I, then a butternut squash soup. What? And it's pretty much the same. Oh, it's the same technique. Yeah. Here, here's here's some soup recipes for you: butternut squash and slices of apple and chunks of onion. There's a soup. Uh, what else could you do? You could do potato and uh, parsnips or peppery, right? Mm -hmm. So you could do some, some potato and parsnip soup, and that would be quite nice, and garnish it with some leeks. Yep. Uh, you could do basic... Celery is another thing. Oh, yeah, celery. Yep. Uh, celery, what goes well with celery? Uh, fennel. Fennel, oh my god, a fennel soup would be so good. You just throw a bulb of fennel in there. Uh, so out of curiosity... Yeah, when's it done? Yeah. How about now? When, um, when it's to the, des the desired consistency. Yeah. How much does like a decent uh, immersion blender run you? Uh, I would say thirty to forty dollars oh, for a not, very high end okay. one. That's not bad. And you, all. if you go to Superstore, you can get them a little bit cheaper than okay. that. Okay. Ten bucks. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah, ten bucks for a cheap one, but you know, if the difference is ten or twenty dollars, spend the twenty dollars. Yeah. If you can, if you can't, a ten dollar immersion blender, as long as it's not. One speed, which is super fast, and doesn't turn on as soon as you plug it in. Here's a question I'd like to address. Karsma asks, uh, or mentions that their manager issue with cooking is they have to stand around not doing much of anything. That's what phones are for. Yes, that's that's specifically Podcasts. why I bought <laughs> yes. AirPods. So here's the thing. Like I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm 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 kind of on team team Karsma. A big reason 
why I am like always eat, like in the editing room or streaming or doing like work or going to like the gym or something like that is because I need to keep my mind like I need to be doing something at all times or else I start like you know not feeling great or having like bad thoughts and stuff like that. That's the the joy of anxiety and whatnot. Um, so that that is actually a huge thing for cooking. Too, Podcasts. Anyway. Audiobooks. Um, audiobooks. And also, like, I mean, like, these are very simple recipes, but if you're doing something complicated that you've never done before, well, you need to pay attention. When I was doing that Osobuco braise, mm -hmm. I, that, was, that was a full hour of me give, devoting my full attention. <laughs> um, so this is me. I've added, if we go to the overhead, I've added some cram. Ooh. I've added, ooh, maybe I'm going to say two-thirds of a cup, half a cup. <laughs> Just give that one more, whoops, whiz to make sure it's well incorporated. And then I feel like, Ben, we need to get you a bowl and a spoon so you can try this. I would love to. Because that's it. We're done. If we hadn't added the cream, this would be a vegan dish. <laughs> oh, that looks good. The cream I really adds a lot, though. So, like, if unless you have, unless you are lactose intolerant or you don't do milk for ethical reasons, which, no judgment, that's you, uh... I, uh, I recommend adding it. I think it just adds that little bit of fat really helps out the uh, now again, let's, the mouth feel to not to use that sort of jokingly used term in a serious yeah. way. Mm. But there, I mean, and there, there's sort of vegan al vegan alternatives. Yeah, coconut milk is uh, something that kind of little, many people have actually been. Vegan mentioning. alternatives can be dicey about how they react to heat, though. So check first. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, coconut like, cream would be good though. Yeah. Coconut cream would be good, but it will ta make your stuff taste like coconut. But this is, uh, don't forget, you can do Oops. a lot with this dish mm -hmm. if you wanted to add more bacon, bacon, potato onion. chunks. Yeah, bacon would leaks. be pretty sweet in this. Uh, ooh, you could use this as a base, and you can add uh, fresh corn yep. and oh, potato wow. chunks and bacon, and you can make a cauliflower corn and bacon Little chowder. chopped mm -hmm. carrots. Or some, some like, uh, sausage might be tasty, too. Mm. Another, oh, sausage is good in this. Another pro tip, when, while we're still on the topic of bacon, <clears throat> do a bacon beforehand, and then freeze it in the freezer in between pieces of paper towel and a Ziploc bag. And that's the perfect opportunity for you to just take that out and crumble that right into this dish. All right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I feel like bacon would probably yeah. go really well with this. Little cheddar cheese right. shredded on top. It's super hot. Oh, it's so good. It's nicely salty, like it's quite salty, but in a good way. Yeah. There's no really reason good. that should taste so good, considering yeah. how easy it is. Yeah, no, it's quite good. So uh, bacon would definitely be really tasty with this. It's quite hot though. Yeah. <laughs> kind of burned my mouth a little, a little bit. I'm sorry, it. Ben. No, it's okay. So this would be, I mean, I guess like just like this, it would be great as a uh, as like a, a lunch or like a starter or something. And then if you put some more sort of substantial stuff in it, you could, I, I could, you could, if you just wanted to make this a substantial dinner, like, yeah, it's a, it's actually quite low in calories if you're watching that kind of thing, because all it is is cauliflower. But this mm. and a, uh, uh, but this with some bread and butter is very good I feel like it's with right. some, with some other vegetables mixed in. Maybe uh, this and a, uh, a grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah. The dip in that would be. Oh yeah. The viscosity. Mm. So as you can see, this is super easy to make. And I'm I am not a vegetable cauliflower person at all. I'm actually like not a cauliflower person. No, so. cauliflower is not good raw. Yeah. yeah, or used in like or like you know when they put in cauliflower in your salad or something like that. I'm like, bah, get out of here, cauliflower. <laughs> Nobody likes you. But, uh, uh, least you're favorite her first. Brassica. Yeah. Ben, ben, not a cauliflower. Oh, cauliflower. This is my dinner, by the way. This is yeah, quite I haven't nice. eaten anything. Yeah. I'm so hungry. Uh, <laughs> I'll get some after, but uh, yeah. That's it. Yep. So cauliflower, chop it the fuck up, cover it with just enough water. Like, cause you, cause this actually turned out great viscosity wise. Like if you look at that, because I've done this enough that I sort of can eyeball it. But if you think you put in too much water, it's easy to take some out. You can always add more water later. So air on the side of just enough water that it cooks, but not so much that it, the tops of the cauliflower are covered. Boil it until it's completely mushy. Then puree it and add a bit of cream. The British end. food. Yeah, so there you go. Mm -hmm. Could broccoli work as it? Broccoli would work, it just wouldn't have as nice a consistency. What mm -hmm. works really well, can we get the overhead camera again? Broccoli has lots of little tiny uh, bits which tend to flow through the blender. 
Yeah, there. I've done the soup with broccoli because you know if you have broccoli around and you want to use it up because maybe it's getting a little, getting on a bit and it's not as good to just eat. Uh, like what is nice about this is it really cooks down and gets this very rich, creamy consistency that makes you think you're eating something with a lot more ingredients and a lot mm -hmm. more stabilizers almost. Like it's because the fiber acts as a stabilizer. Uh, so, yeah. So I think what we're going to do here at this point is we're going to take a short break, get things cleaned up just a bit, and we'll be back with part two of Yay! Teaching Ben to Cook. Don't go away. More Tinker Tailor Soldier Fry after this. Where's the knife? Back to Tinker Tailor Soldier Fry, where I am joined by Kathleen, who is teaching Ben some basic recipes on uh, just how to cook. How to cook, yeah. yeah, how to how to cook mm -hmm. like easy, healthy meals. Mm -hmm. So we just yeah. finished up doing a uh, a cauliflower soup, which was magnifique. It I was cannot, suspiciously good. I cannot believe how good a... That's high price coming what, from you. I appreciate that, Ian. What, what, it's a four-ingredient soup. Yeah. I, I can't believe I'd never made something like that before. It mm -hmm. was that's, so easy and that, so good. That soup is my gift to the world. Honestly, like, I'm sure I'm not the only person who's ever come up with it. So, Kathy, I've taught many people that soup. I've never seen anybody do a soup quite like that. <laughs> so I'm going to say that's my that's my living legacy. Mm -hmm. so, so next up, we're dealing with a, uh, a salad. We're going to do a, a warm chicken salad. Well, mm. Alley Cuisine. All right. Oh, uh, thank you, Chairman Kaga. There, 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 there was a a request um, that in addition to the the forum if, uh, if recipes could um, there's a food in channel the in the discord yeah. mm. and saying it'll be uh, they're apparently having they they have been actually working on yeah. assembling Di a cookbook discord is like the millennial Forum. <laughs> I'll see what for a like, modern generation. It's like the regular forum, but fidget spinning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so we go to the overhead. If you remember, I because I had something to, I needed something to do while our soup was boiling. I have done tomatoes and bell pepper and onion and some olive oil and some salt. And you see, there's a bunch of tomato liquids swishing around at the bottom. I don't necessarily want that. Yeah. It's fine to have some in there. It's not really that important either way. If you if our tomatoes hadn't been sitting around in salt for a few minutes, then you would see less of that liquid. There's some oil on the top that you can see too. Uh, when I do this at home, typically I will use uh, cherry tomatoes or little uh, whole tomatoes that you don't even cut up. Uh, little uh, cocktail tomatoes that are very small. Um, Caveman Kellen, any keto recipes that you would suggest? Why, our first recipe is entirely keto. Mm. And uh, so is this one. You typically so, eat keto. I do because yeah. how I, it's that's, the only way. It's the only way I can lose weight. Yeah. The, uh, 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 the fact, like, in the, fact, all of these are pretty keto friendly. Isn't it pronounced keto? I keto? thought it was keto. I don't For know. For ketosis? Uh, ketosis. I don't know. I was yeah. keto. So, there we keto. go. Okay, it is keto. keto. Yeah, whatever. Ketar. You say keto. I s we say keto. Whatever. Now, now you you put those uh, vegetables in, uh, you know, because because you were sort of uh, killing time while the thing was boiling earlier. Yeah. But does uh, sort of putting them in the sort of salt and the oil and sort of marinating it a little bit help? Is that a mm -hmm. thing, or it doesn't matter? Uh, it helps, I guess. I don't typically do it because I'm usually like trying to trying to like get. Just like I don't typically let them marinate because it's typically like toss, toss, toss into the oven, go. Mm -hmm. You can. Mm -hmm. uh, some vegetables actually do very well with a little bit of uh, sitting time. Uh, eggplants, if you can let them sit with salt, will draw some of the bitter, uh, bitter flavor out of it. And so what you've done here is you've tossed these with oil and salt, which is going to draw some of the moisture out of them. And it'll help them cook. Yep. Mm. Uh, but anyhow, so I've set our oven here to broil, and I think it's going. Yeah. Ooh, I'll... Maybe not that high up. Huh? Ian, I've never used this before. Is that too high for a broiler? This is the third time this oven has been used, so we're about to find we'll out. Find All it. right. That's, so, okay, what are we doing here? I'm going to get you hot air, uh, hot air holders. Oven, mitt. oven mitts, yes, thank you. <laughs> hot okay. air holders. Okay, oh, by the way, people who are talking about keto uh, being like, hey, uh, isn't that like protein heavy? Kind of, but you want to eat lots of vegetables because it's not necessarily I can only eat bacon and cheese and cream. It's like you should eat a little bit of bacon and cheese and cream because you because fat is good for you and it's good for your metabolism and it's good for your body anyhow and you should always eat good fats. 
Uh, but you should also eat lots of vegetables because they're filled with delicious fibers. Yeah, a keto diet is, is more about what you're not eating. Yeah. Which yeah. is to say, it's more like about sugars and grains. carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. yeah. And well, yes, thank you. I have lost about 20 pounds since mm -hmm. July. And uh, Ricario, I agree with you on that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's funny. Diet doesn't really do anything for me. Re weight loss exercise does. Yeah, lots of people. That everybody's different. What works for me won't work for you. Won't work for uh, won't work for Ben. It won't work for Ian. Everybody's different. I mean, so, pick, pick the diet that you can stick to is mm -hmm. the bigger thing, yeah. right? Like, I mean, in in general, you're just trying to eat healthier, and so pick the healthy way that works for you. <laughs> Uh, is keto like the South Beach diets where they completely cut out carbs? Sort of, but there's a higher, there's a bigger emphasis on fat yeah. in keto. Like, because you don't want to cut out, uh, like, if you cut out all carbs and all fat and you're just eating, like, lean mm. chicken breast, that's incredibly bad for, for you. Keto is, that's a, more of a uh, analog for the. For Atkins, yes, I guess, more like South right. Beach. That's not what you're doing because there's tons of carbs in cauliflower, there's tons of carbs in kale, there's tons of carbs in salad. Uh, like, uh, yeah, uh, keto <laughs> typically doesn't, you don't get to do milk. I guess at South Beach is no milk, Atkins mm -hmm. is milk. I don't know. Yeah. Or just don't like, eat sugar. Yeah. Yeah, that's really. Like, that, that's kind of the thing, right? <laughs> like, I, I don't typically drink, like, pop or anything like that or soda. Or, you know, or, we're not doctors. Yeah. Talk <laughs> to your doctor. To, yeah, figure out what's best for you, man. Talk to a dietitian. Find... Uh, but do I suggest the chicken nugget diet. But I'm 100% sure that everyone watching this can stand to exercise just a little bit more. Oh, everybody sitting here can stand to exercise just a little bit more. That's why I feel confident making that claim. That's why I go to the gym every day. Uh, hmm. I mean, there's always that, and there's always that just like, even if you aren't trying to lose weight or whatever, like, it's eating healthier is not going to be bad. Mm. <laughs> just eat less sugar. Eat less sugar. Uh, don't eat muffins. People are always like, muffins are so healthy for you. It's like, no, They're muffins are cupcakes without frosting. <laughs> They're devils They're in so branny disgustingness. Just, just, yeah, if you're gonna, if you just, just admit what you're eating, you know, and yeah. use it and mm -hmm. eat it in that way, right? Just, just accept that you're eating Trade something. Mm. That is basically yeah. a cupcake. I like Beach's idea. Well, if you're going to eat a muffin, right? just eat a damn cupcake. <laughs> They're better anyway. <laughs> yeah. 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 Muffins are cupcakes with good PR, pretty mm. much. Bagels aren't good for you either, really. No, they're very... Should have collect. Like, if you need to eat a lot of calories quickly, a bagel is great. But, you know, like, the thing is, I feel like most people... And this is, uh, I'm killing time because I need to let these vegetables <laughs> broil until they get like, because we're actually doing like blistered tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they blister. Hopefully there wasn't too much water in these tomatoes. But you actually want them to blacken up a bit, which mm. you think, oh no, I'm burning my food. It's fine. It's going to taste good. Yeah. It's going to taste good. Um, here's the thing. No matter what you can and cannot eat, almost everybody, and this is just a function of how diets are and how food works and the fact that carbohydrates are easy, convenient, cheap and delicious, almost everybody eats too many carbs and not enough vegetables. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter like what if you're watching your diet or not. Mm -hmm. Eat more vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I now have an empty bowl mm -hmm. with uh, with, with it, some tomato juice in. Yeah, it. tomato juice. It's is fine. fine. It's flavor. Mm -hmm. It's flavor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut get my chicken out. Mm -hmm. The thighs? The chicken thighs. The yeah. delicious chicken thighs. Where's my garbage bowl? I guess this is a compost bowl, but I just mm -hmm. need somewhere to put my garbage. Mm -hmm. I do want to clarify my statement too about the exercise, not necessarily to lose weight, but just yeah. for cardiovascular health. Yeah, yeah. That was that was not Thank an implication where Ian was like, y'all need to lose weight. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think it was, you know, exercise and stay healthy. All That's right. literally why I do it. I, do, I go to the gym to make myself feel better. Yeah, uh, exercise has, has been medically proven to release endorphins into your body. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do with the chicken thighs that we're going to put in the salad. Mm. Wait, hand me that Red Bull again. Yeah. I just want to make it. Before you do that, Kathleen, let's dump some of that uh, oh, liquid yeah. out let's of there. Let's dump yeah. the liquid out because I actually don't want them in there. Mm. Uh, when I do this at home and I don't have the vegetables sit, I just dump the chicken thighs into the same bowl that the vegetables were in. Because then that puts a little bit of uh, a little, puts a little bit of oil on the chicken thighs. Yeah, but I don't necessarily want the enzymes in the tomato juice to start breaking down, breaking the, tomatoes, down the, or the chicken thighs too much. 
All right, so that's two chicken thighs. That's for the salad. This is for the oh, yakudan, so I am going to cut it up a little bit. And not a lot. There's not a lot of prep work here. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing a particularly good job. I'm just cutting up my chicken thighs. I'm going with boneless, skinless, boneless, skinless chicken thighs to cook in about 20 minutes in a 350 degree oven, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, so 20 minutes is enough time for anybody to wait. Uh, you can start your salad, and then you can go watch an episode of something on Netflix. We should remind people that we are what we are currently making Oya well, we're mostly authentic Oyakodon. It's absolutely like barely authentic, yeah. but it is does taste very the good. The mother and child dish. Mm -hmm. Called so because it is the, the reuni reuniting of the mother, the chicken, and the egg. Is that actually it? That's yep. yes. Oh, wow. That's depressing. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> delicious. <laughs> it is delicious, and it's easy, and it's cheap. Yeah, it's kind of sinister. A little it? bit, yeah. Wait till you have the father and child. <laughs> Oh, Ew. a natural harvest recipe. <laughs> Ian, why? Okay. Food shouldn't give me feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mother and child reunion. All it's right, only so a, I've cut up some chicken. chicken. Yes. Uh, Ian, yes. could you start the, the pan and could you put some olive oil in it? Because I, I need to go wash can. my hands. Uh, here's where. Uh, salmonella, right? Yeah, or just bad germs. Bad germs. Salmonella. Trichin trichinosis is mostly pork, but you can get it from anything, Do really. Do you have uh, just water bin, Nine? Yes. Perfect. We're going to need that in a second, because I'm going to teach people how to properly heat a pan. All right. Well, at least how I would properly heat a I'm pan. drink some of this first. Uh, you want hot, Kathleen, correct? Uh, quite hot. Not like super duper hot. Okay. Like let's medium plus. Chicken. Take, let's take look it up to 400. Wow, look at that chicken. <laughs> We're going to take it up to 400 degrees Bye. Fahrenheit. Now you're wondering, Ian... You didn't put anything in your pan. That's right. Okay. Generally, I've, I, I've done a lot of experimentation with pans, and I've read every... every... hot take on the hot pan. Okay. And uh, I, I found that what works... what tends to work best for me and my cookware is heating first, Kathleen's mic is on. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is that noise? It sounds like water. I, I, like, I like the term wet mic. Wet mic. <laughs> That's a very good term. Yeah. I'll take it. You guys hear me washing my hands and yeah. talking about how wonderful Ben and Ian are? Oh, oh. no, my secret's out. Damn. No, I, I muted it before you talked about how awesome so, yeah. We're going to get the, the, the pan nice and hot before anything even gets touches in. it. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's right. Don't put your food... God, don't put meat into a cold pan. And don't put oil into a cold pan and heat the oil up at the same time as the frying mm -hmm. pan, especially if you're using cast iron. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. But, uh, so we're getting warmer. The reason I've got the water out there is I'm going to ask you to use your fingers okay. to just sprinkle a couple drops in. Gotcha. And that's going to be able to tell you when your water is at its... Uh, when the pan? When the pan is at its best time to be adding the oil. Yeah. So, Beach, can you get a uh, tight shot in on the top of the uh, the pan there? Mm -hmm. I want to show people what the water looks like when you've got a good, hot uh, pan. Ben, would you mind just tossing a couple of sprinkles in there? Sure. Oh, it's ready. You oh, see, man, look at it. See how the, the water just it, like, beads up? Beads it up. dances. Oh, yeah. I want to do that again because it's magic. It's yeah. science. Yeah, look at it go. Also, I don't have one of these at home, but I really like induction cooktops because they have two settings. Mm -hmm. You can either go with the, the heat setting, which is traditional, or you can go with a fairly accurate temperature. So I'm okay. currently heating this pan to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That sounds okay. fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're good to add the oil at any point. Cool. But we should probably make sure that we're ready to put the chicken in because we're using olive oil and again, low smoke point. So we want to be, there's not going to be much time between when nope. the oil gets hot and when it's going to be time to go. Okay. I need to get that. So I goozled myself and I used all my chicken stock to make my, uh, oh, no. to, well, that's okay. We're going to do the, fuck it, we'll do it live. No one's going to die if we just use a little bit of water. Actually, this, but I'll this, let you this, use that. But this does call for chicken stock, this recipe. Okay. So, so it's keep ready. That in it's mind. good and hot. All right. So do 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 do. That might be a little hot. Let's take it down then. Because it's starting to smoke immediately. We're gonna take it down to 250 Fahrenheit. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's gonna be. That's too hot. That's okay. But look at that beautiful sear immediately. That roundness. 
Mm -hmm. Delicious. Oh, that Mayard reaction. Can I trade spaces? Trade yeah. places yeah. with you, Ben? Sorry. That makes sense. Okay. So, Ben, yeah. make this dish. <gasps> Shoot, could you get me a bowl and a fork? The exotic. We're going to cook our chicken. We're yeah. not going to cook it 100% all the way, but we are going to brown it. Okay. Oh, that already smells so good, and I'm so hungry. Yeah. Why do I do all these? Why do I always do these cooking shows on an empty stomach? <laughs> So you cook it here, you, you want to get it nice and brown. I don't need to get it necessarily nice and brown, but I need to get it... Just slightly brown. Brown, because right. I'm going to do the rest of the cooking. I think that was Julia Child's secret. Always stay hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, now I... All right, so... Do to do to do while that's going. I need... Pretend this is chicken broth. This will be fine. Without chicken broth. Okay, it won't be as good. I need... One and a half cup? Half cup of chicken broth. I forgot to put this in our recipe list. One teaspoon of rice wine vinegar. Whoops. Or a bit more. <laughs> this is not one of those super precise recipes. One tablespoon of mirin. Buy the good mirin. If you cheap out on mirin, you are getting you are not getting mirin. You are getting water and sugar. So, so what what is mirin? Mirin is a fortified Japanese rice wine. It is a staple of Japanese mm -hmm. cooking. It is incredibly. It is it it gives many Japanese dishes their flavor. signature Japanese. It's basically what makes uh, not sushi, that's rice wine vinegar, but it's part of what makes sushi rice taste different than regular rice. Mm. Yeah. And I'm going to add, typically I don't want to do one tablespoon, I'm going to add a bit more soy sauce because I want this to be saltier. Yeah. So rice wine that. vinegar, uh, soy sauce, and beer. Yeah. yeah. This is a, this combination. I haven't, I haven't made this in a while, so I'm just going to up that mirror and I'm going to add a bit more. So, so just, we'll say one tablespoon and one and t one teaspoon. Just for just for some fun uh, information, this combination, n excluding the uh, the chicken broth, this combination is basically your standard Japanese uh, cooking combination. Okay. Yeah. You, you get th this combination of uh, mirin, soy sauce, and rice vinegar is used in uh, in teriyaki mm -hmm. in. It's oyakodon in the sauces for uh, katsudon. Does, doesn't that already smell in here like a Japanese mm -hmm. restaurant? Yeah. That is the flavor. Immediately. Uh, so, so, you, so you toss all that in and the onions in at the, about the same time. Yeah, and what we're going to do is we're going to, because I cooked my chicken, because like, you don't want to overcook your chicken, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want rubbery, disgusting chicken. So you want to brown it a little bit. Oops. Sorry, one second. I have some raw chicken stuck to my spoon and I want to get that so, in there and cooked. Like my my instinct would be to to put in the onions like with the no. like like to brown off First, the onions. Yeah, you do not want to do that with Japanese dishes. Right. No, okay. what you want to do is you want to cook the onions uh, in this delicious broth. Mm -hmm. So the onion flavor comes out into the broth and mm -hmm. the onions infuse with this, which is why it's so yep. thin because you don't want to cook this forever and make disgusting rubbery chicken. You want right. soft onions with it rather than a, a browned onion. Yeah. All right. So then so we're going to let that cook until the onions are cooked. And Time how, for the egg. Oh, oh, oh. When are the onions cooked? I mean, it sort of depends when they're done. Yep, yep, yep. Can you pass me at that towel? I just want to wipe up some water. When they're soft and when they're generally the, the color of the broth that you're cooking them in. Yeah, it doesn't take long because the onions are sliced Very thin. Reason. You can use the same bowl that you prepared your sauce in because it's all going to the same place anyhow. Yep. Nothing in that sauce is going to kill you if you eat it raw, <laughs> right? That's why I tasted it. Makes sense. Ooh, and now's the time when we separate the eggs? Nope. Oh, good. So it's two eggs in the bowl? Two eggs. Oh, no. And I, I mean, got some shell in there. You could honestly add as many eggs as, or as few eggs as you wanted for this. I, I find the magic recipe here is, uh, oh, I got to go wash my hands again. I have egg <laughs> on my hands. I'm sorry. Mute my mic. This is going to cook. The magic recipe is one egg per one boneless, skinless chicken thigh. I think it's the best ratio, but experiment. <laughs> You do you, chicken fam. Yeah. So now we got four Ow. eggs. What do you do with them? 
You okay? <laughs> Here, hold this egg. Now, now I'm gonna. Now we only have. Ian, hold this egg. Now we only have Ben's mic. <laughs> Ian, hold this egg. Ian, hold this egg. What am I gonna do with all these eggs? <laughs> well, now that you're holding eggs, you don't. You have to worry about that and not the pain in your leg right now. <laughs> Ow. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm good. So let's push that around a bit there and just have a look at how things are going. Mm -hmm. This smells so good. I, 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 I love your. Uh, I, I kind of want that to be just like a hospital or something. <laughs> it's just like, oh all man, right. I I just got shot in the a in the leg. All right, all right, hold this egg. Hold, hold this <laughs> yeah, other egg. Exactly. Hold this egg. That is American. It's like, oh geez. Yeah. Why does geez, this, this is a real? Yeah, I see. This is a real tough problem. We're gonna need a full dozen eggs. Why does this? One. <laughs> why is this combat medic holding so many eggs can in you, battle? Can you peek at my vegetables? How are they looking? Are they starting to brown? Uh. Kind of, okay, yes. Okay, great. Then just leave them alone. None of them are brown, but they're starting to dry up a bit. So okay, yeah, we're okay starting. There. Okay, that's, that's, maybe yeah, this was a poor, okay, so this is so easy to make it. It's so fast. You can serve this with rice or if you're some sort of that's anti-starch. Anti oh, we're almost done. Anti-starch yeah. fiend like myself, you can buy the those containers of riced cauliflower that's pretty good. It's not great, but it's good enough. Hmm. Sometimes that's all you want. I'd say our onions are almost cooked. I like them a little bit more cooked than this. I like them soft. Yeah. You don't want oniony flavor. You want a melange. Uh, if you look up a lot of recipes for this online, I call this my mostly authentic because it's very straightforward and simple. And you do need the mirin. It's so important to pay mm -hmm. money for good mirin for this. Okay. This, this bottle, which I looked at like six different kinds because I was at a fancy grocery store that would. This is organic sweet rice seasoning with sea salt. This was eleven dollars from oh. Oshawa, Ontario. Right. Uh, but look, I'm legitimately I, thinking of just popping off to Wellburns. Wellburns, <laughs> Wellburns won't have this. Go to the market. No? Okay. But like, I've made lots of oyakudon, and that's how much I've used. This is like a six-month investment. Wow. The, okay. The, the, awesome. Yes, yes, you will pay a lot up front, but the per use investment is low. Yeah. So, and the the flavor investment is very high. Uh, so How can you tell what good mirin is? Uh, you're you're going to look at the ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, organic sweet rice, distilled rice wine, organic koji, which is rice and koji seed, sea salt. Right. If you see sugar, mm -hmm. it's not good mirin. Okay. Because the, the rice wine is sweet by itself. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Good to know. There you go. Well, that's because of the distillation process. It's, it's almost like a rice brandy. Mm. Yeah, kind of actually. That's a way. That's a better way of thinking of it than a wine. All right. Um, so this is cooked down a little bit. The nice thing about mirin is it's quite sweet, so it does sort of like um, add like some silkiness to the dish mm -hmm. as well. In other words, we're reducing the sauce. We're yeah. reducing the sauce and we're cooking the onions. It depends how much how saucy you like your oyakudon. Mm -hmm. I like mine quite saucy. Mm -hmm. I do uh, like sauce. So I'm I'm almost like happy to call this one done, honestly, and start and add our egg. So let's leave that there. And then we're going to beat our egg. Maybe you don't want to use a fork and a bowl, but you know what? It's also, I'm, I'm from the, you cook with what you have school of, school of stuff. I just I have never used anything but a fork and a bowl. I like a tiny whisk at home, yeah. but I'm a fancy lady. <laughs> Whereas I can't be bothered yeah. to buy uh, spend the $1 on a tiny yeah, whisk. Yeah, I, I tend to use a fork when I'm making scrambled eggs. I have strong opinions about the right way to make scrambled eggs. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's a very divisive one. Mm -hmm. Gordon Ramsay is the only one who is correct. Yeah, I use the Gordon Ramsay style. One. I just don't make scrambled eggs. I love scrambled eggs. I don't really like eggs. <laughs> well, there's egg in this dish. No, yeah, like, like I mean, like egg, egg and other things is fine, but just like having some eggs for yeah. breakfast. Uh, I'm not a big fan of just straight egg, but like. You know, in uh, katsudon or like all these like Japanese dishes that I'm so in love with, I, I'm totally fine with it. And I like it. All right, that's it. I'm pouring my egg into my sauce. Ooh, do we have okay. a lid for this pan? I guess yes, I should do. Check. Right over there. Good. Pass me the lid, please. Uh, here we go. That should nope. fit. Is this really? I don't. Yeah, I was gonna say. Let me check if there's womp, one. Womp. In. I mean, I'll hold the lid over it. So. Uh, and then you want to put a lid on your oh, pan? Oh, yep, here we go. Oh, good. I thought we had a lid. Uh, the lid on the pan is not maybe strictly necessary, but it depends how uh, raw you like your eggs. Mm -hmm. Some people really don't like them that raw. <laughs> so this will help the egg. Because the, the, your chicken is cooked, your onions are cooked. This is The, the eggs are not going to take very long to cook. What, what, what you're doing here is setting the egg. 
yeah. rather than necessarily cooking it through. Okay. Mm -hmm. So would you would you normally you normally have this with like uh, rice or uh... rice? You could do cauliflower. We're probably because we didn't bring rice, so we're just gonna eat it. But it's delicious. Rice mm. is the, the traditional. Right. Uh, it soaks up that delicious sauce. Yep, yep, That's yep. it. This is a yakudan. You're done. By the way, we're just waiting for the egg to be cooked enough that I'm happy with it. That's Plus awesome. It's, uh, one of the one That's of easy. the. Yeah, it's so like it's, five it, ingredients. Yeah, well, I mean, like discluding all the sauces and whatnot that you you know you make that initial investment, and then mm -hmm. like I'm sure most of us have soy sauce in our fridge and and stuff, right? So it's like so, three ingredients there, right? Then chicken, I went, chicken egg and onion. Yeah, I went to one of the the I went to the expensive market. Would you like to know how much the ingredients that I purchased for this meal cost? Yes, absolutely. That's a huge part of it. Thirteen dollars for everything you had to buy. Yep, like for, for three the, meals. For the onion, for the onion meat. And yep. uh, egg? eggs, and you've got eggs left over. You've got meat. yeah, thirteen dollars for a meal. That's and amazing. If you if you d did some better job shopping than I did, mm. you could be spend less than that. Yeah, and probably get a few of these. <laughs> Dang, that's it. As well. Yeah, no, I'm not cooking anything complicated because I have one burner and I'm not mm -hmm. in a studio with a kitchen. If you're eating out all the time and you're wondering where your money's going, that's where. Yeah. Well, that's that's really good because yeah, like this is all stuff that's like very easy to pick up and make so that's this is like this is perfect this took to make this one meal it was like half an hour which i've got mm -hmm. oh yeah this is this is like a five minute meal yeah if you have a rice cooker which i think yes i do has. yes um you have two burners yeah i've got four yeah. oh fancy uh, yeah fancy big with... oven <laughs> yeah it's true and that's 13 dollars canadian yeah so in america it's like nothing. It's like five bucks. I mean, yeah. let's. Oh, so the egg just kind of poofs up like that. Full honesty, yeah. American uh, gro American food prices generally are right. lower than than Canadian. Uh, yeah. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, uh, and I know this is a heat safe spatula because I'm the one who helped pick it out. And now. Wait, oh shoot! This Sorry. This is the hardest part. There's still some sauce coming out the bottom. That's okay. Normally, you would be serving this over rice. Look how much food this makes. This is a mountain of food. This is two portions for an adult, or one portion for a portion for a hungry adult. But this is a meal for two. You can do this with one egg and one chicken thigh if you just want to eat dinner for yourself. Yeah, safe. It's safe. Yeah. Because it's off. Yeah. Great. That's it. Serve this, and I know it looks gross, but that's just like a little bit of like maybe residual egg liquid and some. Uh, and some sauce, which is going to normally soak into your rice. Sorry. Do you, 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 ben, have a, uh, a clean fork. Sure. And don't use the egg fork. <laughs> Put that back and egg down. I'm going to get some of this egg, get some of this chicken. Ooh, yeah. Uh, so if you look up recipes for yakudon online, a lot of Grab them will, some too. will also include sugar. I don't do the sugar. So it's maybe not as sweet as you get. That looks gross and tastes great at all. Things that look gross and taste great at the same time. That's pr like, no. Is it authentic? No. It, would a Japanese person be impressed with this? No. Is it, this is absolutely what I would want to eat. Like, is regular. this good mm. enough for you to make for yourself in less than 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. Yes. And say, I had a protein. There's even a little vegetable in here. There's some chicken. It was really cheap. I'm happy. I'm full. It's comforting. It's warm. Put that oh, on some yeah. rice. So and you put, put your this rice on cooker. rice. I put this on on chunk like shaved cauliflower that you can get <laughs> from the grocery store. No, it doesn't taste that good. But mm -hmm. you know what? Whatever. I would put this on some some good uh, some good Japanese rice. Oh my god, it's so be, tasty! Mm -hmm. And imagine that sauce mixing with the rice, and you just scoop it up with a spoon at the bottom. Oh yeah. Why would you add sugar to that? Because traditional Japanese, I've looked up the actual Japanese recipes and they usually suggest adding like a teaspoon of sugar. She's not wrong. I do add uh, sugar to my oyakudon and it does make for a sweeter, more teriyaki flavor. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're trying to avoid sugar, you don't need it. It's not necessary. I try not to add extra sugar to meals that don't need it because the mirin's already sweet. There's sugar in soy <laughs> sauce. It's plenty sweet already. Yeah. Oh yeah, big time. And I mean, well, this is delicious. And this was without the chicken broth. Yep. Yeah. True. It was just water, right? So I can only imagine it's even like even more tasty with the yeah. chicken broth. Yeah, I added a bit of extra soy sauce to sort of compensate. Mm -hmm. And that's um, part of the things you'll pick up when you're when, when you're doing more cooking. Mm -hmm. It's learning what gives things the flavor inside your ingredients. When you're dealing with stock, most of the most of the flavor is coming from the salt. Mm -hmm. So if you if you're at a stock, add more salt or add more soy sauce, which mm -hmm. is mostly sodium. All right, oven veggies. Mm-hmm. 
Sure, I'm very hungry. Uh, yeah, they're getting black. They got a little. They're not like blackened, but they've got some. Let me peek at them. Sure. I'll leave you guys to the <laughs> the delicious. I want to make sure that you can you because you're hungry. Yep, I'll leave that. <laughs> I think we're that, all hungry. I'm yeah. gonna leave that to both of you because I have to go home and cook for someone else. Ah, yes. And not spoil my dinner. Yes. But, but damn, I'm enjoying this. Mm hmm Do you want another bite? I might. Here, get it. I got some onion and shit oh, there yeah, for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is delicious, and this is so. I've always wanted to like make more dishes like this. Yeah, so. like, hey, not again. done yet. This You're... this whole like oven chicken thing is not working out how I wanted it to. <laughs> you can cook ethnic food now. Yeah, I can I... amaze. I what? can amaze all the people that I date. I do want to say <laughs> it's not authentic. Don't feed this to a Japanese person. They'll be like, "What is this crap?" But you know what? It's good. I think they'd appreciate the attempt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then how long did that take? Literally no time. Yep. Yep. I sliced up half. I sliced up a quarter of an onion. I chopped two chicken chicken thighs into random assortments. I threw them into a hot pan, seared the chicken because that's the thing is you don't want to cook the chicken all the way through before you get to it because you're cooking the chicken plenty. Mm -hmm. While the chicken is browning, you mix up your recipe, which by the way, which was half a cup of liquid. You can use water or chicken stock. Uh, if you're gonna use water. Use about a tablespoon and a half of uh, soy sauce and a tablespoon plus a teaspoon of mirin. If you're using chicken stock, you can go down and just do a tablespoon of soy sauce because there's going to be plenty of salt in it already. Mm. Mix all of that together, put it in the pan, let, and then add your onion. Once the onions are cooked to your liking, which for me should be like soft and like goopy, essentially, uh, then, then, uh, then add your egg, put a lid on it, and when the egg is like solidified, essentially, you're done. Mm -hmm. Put it on top of rice. Mm -hmm. I did want to, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, four teaspoons of mirin. I did want to address people in the chat in the chat there though that if you want a properly authentic yakudon, yeah, swap out your chicken stock for dashi, dashi stock. But it's, dashi is like actually kind of hard to find. I don't know. It's in most. Asian portions of your supermarket. But the thing is, like, I, 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 I on it. Like, mirin is easier to find than dashi. Mm -hmm. What is dashi? Dashi is a umami flavored stock that is the base for pretty much every Japanese dish. Oh, okay. It's made from either kelp or. There's the, usually some bonito in it. Or, or bonito. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's one of the two. Hondashi is generally yeah the the bonito based one, which right. is a fish made mm -hmm. from dried fish that you can shave up. It's really good. Do we need to wash off the pan in between making cooking more chicken? Chicken's going in the oven. Yep. Oh right, yes. As soon as as soon as I'm as soon as I'm satisfied with these vegetables, they're not browning as much as I want them to. Do you need to turn? Does that mean you turn up the heat then, or? I've got it to broil max. Literally, this doesn't go any warmer, and they've been in there for like 20 minutes. Mm. So I think I'm just gonna have to pull the trigger, and. Uh, pow pow. Pull them out. Brat brat. Trying to get the blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> Do we own a browning torch? Not here. But you okay. have one. Yes. Can I get the overhead? Would have brought it in. Yeah, I'll take that. They're, it's very hard to see, but they are just starting to blister. You can see some. there's some blackened bits on the top. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's probably not enough. Probably another seven minutes would have been fine. Well, I don't want to take forever. They're still going to be cooked. Mm -hmm. All right. So, the next step. Close the oven so the heat doesn't escape. I'll heat up the soldering iron and we can just turn your oven to 350. Tap each one. It smells really good. Take your chicken breasts, which I tossed in a bit more olive oil and oh. some salt. Mm -hmm. Three, 350 uh, Fahrenheit. 350 Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius, I think. Let me double check that. I we cook with those temperatures here because we're like semi-American. Put them on top of your vegetables. And then just pop it back in there. Sorry, these oven these these gloves are very heat resistant, but they're not very good oven mitts. Twenty minutes at three fifty. Go watch a show on Netflix. You're done. <laughs> Sweet. Then you serve it over greens. We'll have that. In, that'll be done in twenty minutes. <laughs> The, all of this food takes no time. Like the longest yeah. thing was the cauliflower soup because we had to wait for it to boil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we have more egg and onion. So delicious. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think, Ben? Is this 
of a caliber of recipe you could do at home without any further instruction? Yes. So as somebody who does not like cooking, this all seems very easy and fun. Mm -hmm. um, like the main, the main thing that kind of drives me away from cooking is like going and getting all these um, ingredients and stuff like that. Um, and then like... They're only good for one dish. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. only good for one dish. And then sometimes, you know, like there's a lot of the, there's a lot of the times, you know, especially in, 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 in our work and I'm sure for lots of other folk, folks too, that it'll be like, you know, a lot, you'll, you'll plan to have this meal coming up and then suddenly you'll be like, oh, I'm needed at the office <laughs> or something like that. And you're like, well, crap. And then by the time you actually have time to make this meal and you, it's like half some of the, 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 um, the ingredients are bad or, mm -hmm. or whatnot, right? Cause like. A lot of the times, I would go to the grocery store, and I would pick up like a rotisserie chicken, and a bunch of lettuce, mm -hmm. and then I just cut up the chicken and stuff like that, throw it in the fridge, and have some and the lettuce in there, and then take that as like you know lunches. Yeah, but like oh, that's right. a cold salad, which it, gets very depressing. It does, <laughs> right? I have, I think I do it like maybe I, I what actually I end up doing is I end up eating all the dark meat and then all the like light meat on the on the chicken kind of goes waste. to waste. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and, and then the, the lettuce tends to wilt fairly yeah. quickly. Lettuce mm -hmm. does not last if there's one, that long. Well, there's a, uh, uh, there's a trick to that, too. Okay. Uh, what I like to do with my lettuce mm -hmm. is wash it completely, then take a paper towel mm. or two pieces of paper towel, mm -hmm. soak them, uh, wring them out mostly so that they're just damp, place that over the bottom, of your uh, of your lettuce, stick it back in the bag, and then put it inside, and that'll mm. keep your lettuce going for about a week. Okay. Alternately, if you're incredibly lazy, buy a box of salad mix, which is four seventy nine <laughs> for like pre washed. I like the spinach and sweet tender reds, uh, and then when you get that home and crack it open after you're done, take two pieces of paper towel, dry, fold it up, put it in the top. Those will suck all the moisture out and keep your lettuce from going slimy. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean and that'll last you a week. Both and then, sides. Then all you equation. have to do is put a handful <laughs> yeah. of shit in there. Like I, I, Ice Finch has got it more or less right. Like I, I am kind of like a college student at heart. Like I like my meals to be nice and simple and easy. Like I definitely like these big extravagant meals, and I love good food, mm -hmm. right? Um, but cooking itself has just never been something that is like super interesting to me. But I want the ability to have good food without having to uh, eat out. All the time, right? Mm -hmm. So, and this is a great way, like the cauliflower soup, and this has been super awesome. And this and is now, good. As I'm as really, I'm really excited for you to change my mind about salads. <laughs> the, the, I mean, these are both good recipes in terms of they're sort of a, a base that you can, you know, if you don't have cauliflower, you put something else, or if you if you want to, if you have other stuff around, you can just kind of throw it in. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's whatever vegetables you have, boom, goes in. Whatever yeah. meats you have, boom, yeah, like it goes sometime, in. Yeah, like sometimes, sometimes right? I'll, I'll like be, I'll, I'll be at home and I'll be like, I've got some time and I feel like going crazy and experimenting because like my roommate uh, is a big cook. Like he loves cooking. Um, he's the kind of person uh, that will spend like half of Sunday cooking meals for the whole week and they'll be like actually different, you know, like nice big pots of X and and Y and whatnot. But they're all very rice heavy and very um, like some of them just aren't kind of my jam mm -hmm. um, so uh, like sometimes I'll go nuts like la like last week he had like a frozen um, uh, pulled pork mm -hmm. that had been in, like the freezer for like a week or whatever because we had made pulled pork forever ago um, and then I was just like I'm gonna do something silly and like I pulled the pork pulled pork out and like started f like De I defrosted it and then started like frying it again Ooh. and then took a uh, tomato paste and like a whole bunch of other stuff and like made an actual like pulled pork like tomato sauce mm -hmm. and then made like pasta with it right and it was actually really really tasty and delicious and stuff and I like you know sometimes doing stuff like that right but I don't have a lot of the time to do it and I don't necessarily like sitting in the kitchen and stuff like that a lot of time. So <laughs> stuff like this is is so awesome. And I'm so glad Yay! you showed me. And I'm sure there are people Sloppy Joe pasta, yeah, kinda. And it was, but it was really good. And um definitely not healthy. <laughs> uh, yeah, but not every meal has to be healthy. Yeah. Um then I've got a I've got a blog to suggest for you. Okay. And that would be the uh, budget bites blog. Oh uh, right. budget bites is so good. It, They're it, 
her recipes are legit. And it's yeah. right up your Although, alley. Although, I do have to say, her like cost estimates are so far Oh, it's, it's American prices for yeah. that. But well, and it's Southern California prices, because she's like, oh, an avocado, a dollar. It's like, in what universe do you get a ripe avocado but, for a dollar? But yeah. I, I, I don't I don't cook everything she posts, no. but I find it's a great place to just... Never, well, I like reading, and I like watching. Never, I've never made one of her recipes, and it's all, like, and it's turned out bad. Like, I've... I, I've made recipes and I'm like done it and I'm like look, even looking at the recipe and I'm like this is not a good recipe. Yeah, like uh, but all of hers are solid. I'm sorry, Ben, I cut you off. No, 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 it's fine. Like no, no, like I mean, this is a discussion. Like we're all hanging out, talking mm-hmm. food. But like, I like watching, uh, like the Food Network and and like reading. Like one of my favorite graphic novels, and I feel I feel awful because I'm blanking on the author's name, um, but it is a kind of just like an autobiography called Relish. Oh, and yeah. it is a graphic novel just about a uh, you know a girl growing up in a very foodie family. Is that Lucy Neely? Yes, yes, yes. I thank absolutely you. love her work. Oh my god, it's so good and it's really really cute. And like several at several points throughout like the story, uh, like the biography and whatnot, as she's uh, talking about like different foods and all that kind of jazz. Uh, at the end of the chapter, she's like, by the way. This is how you make it, and it's a very cute, like little ingredient list, nice. and like actually, like graphic, uh, like actually a comic of how to cook the 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 meals and stuff. Um, yeah, it's it's super super good. That's also, I I act like it's not even for the meme kind of thing. I do like watching um, Guy Fieri just get really excited <laughs> about food. Like I'm... although he's like. Kind of a gnaw. <laughs> I'm gonna. I do. I do actually like. I'm gonna let you in the secret. I think I'm actually turning the corner on Guy Fieri. Oh yeah. I think he's actually kind of important for giving the idea of lower class food and street food a better name in North America. Yes. And he's very, very enthusiastic about it. Mm-hmm. Um. Can I can I say who is actually a legit cook with good recipes hmm. that I don't think gets enough cred that, these days? Julia Child. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know uh, who that is, so probably. Julia Child, no, sort she's of. She's dead. Uh, oh. She's been dead for a long time, sort of like uh, f- uh, sort of mother of bringing French cooking and like proper European cooking to North America in an era where recipes were like, okay, take a can of this and a can of that and a can of this, mm-hmm. yeah. and then put it in a jello mold. And I'm not joking. Uh, and I was like, oh yeah, Julia Child, she was a famous thing. And then when the Twitch did that Julia Child marathon, and I had very little else to do, so I watched all of her, I watched a lot of Julia Child, and I was like, Oh my God, she's a fantastic cook. These are good recipes. Like she's she's a good cook, and like her omelet technique is revolutionary. Awesome. Um, How have you never heard of Julia Child? Because the thing is, I feel like Julia Child was like the chef for so long, and then like other chefs I, took over. I'd like to I'd like to preface this by saying, like it's not an age thing. Yeah. It's a preference thing. As a, of the time where I'm sure she was quite popular, mm-hmm. I was young. Yeah. And I wasn't watching cooking shows at like age five. You also were probably not born when she was on TV. There you go, like a big part of it too, right? But yeah, um, yeah well, I mean, I wasn't born when she was on mm-hmm. TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Elton Brown is my personal go-to kitchen hero. Mm-hmm. He was the guy who did the, he did the voices, or uh, he was Fukui San on right. uh, Iron Chef. Mm-hmm. And turns out he actually knows a shit ton about cooking and did mm-hmm. his series Good Eats. Right. Yeah, was... Good Eats will never steer you wrong if you just need a place to go. It's generally the first place when I'm searching for a recipe is something, 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 Elton Brown. Mm. If, uh, yeah, uh, I was gonna say, um, if you can find the books, uh, the um, James Barber, uh, The Urban Peasant. Oh, yes, Canadian uh, is, a Cana- is a Canadian, uh, he used to have a TV show called The Urban Peasant, and he has these wonderful cookbooks. There's about three or four of them that are there are the recipes are sort of partially done as like little cartoons mm. and it'll be like you know it'll be so, uh, sometimes like sorry a conversation between two people and it'll be like you know put this in does it have to be how much uh, you know but a handful mm-hmm. like it'll be these very uh, very relaxed and there's one really neat book he's got called like dinner for two or something that's all recipes that are and that they're written as as two people to cook like as if you know uh, you know if you're like cooking with with somebody else so it's like well this person is doing this this person does this just kind of a fun way of doing it mm-hmm. i mean it's also kind of the the hype thing in the anime world right mm-hmm. now are these, the all these cooking and food shows yeah not talking about food wars 
Um, that show is awful. Yep. I said it here live. Somebody had a question for me about how do you know when your chicken is cooked? It's a very enough? good question. It's a great question, and uh, because I feel like that uh, people, food, uh, I actually forgot to turn it to bake, but I'm sure it's fine. It's, it's more fine. forgiving than you think. Mm. Um, uh, people, how do you know when your chicken's cooked enough? Chicken and most things tend to get overcooked. Mm -hmm. Most people way overcook their meat out of like some sort of like internalized food safety message where any kind yeah. of like rawness is the is not okay. The 60s were a bad time for cooking. Uh, yeah. The, the, um, turns out you, you, you 68 degrees is Celsius. Celsius. Mm -hmm. is, is good for pork. So you can mm -hmm. use a meat thermometer to check, or like, if you cut it open and the juices are clear, it's done. And like, some people are like, no, there's still liquid coming out of it. It's mm -hmm. not cooked. No, don't do that. Uh, how do I know when it's done? I was like, okay, it's brown. I'm gonna add some liquid. It's definitely gonna be cooked when I'm done. Yeah. Because no, it was not cooked when I added the liquid. But it was getting there. It was most of the way cooked, and it will definitely be cooked by the time mm. I'm done. And you're in. You suck at cooking is actually a very, very fun <laughs> series to watch, too. Um, other good cooks, if you're looking for recipes and you need to bake something, Nigella Lawson. Mm. I'm so so on her savory recipes, but all of her baked recipes, like all of her baking, is the shit. That woman can bake. And Jamie Oliver, mm -hmm. or not Jamie Oliver, yeah, Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver. Mm. Jamie Oliver, despite people like hating him for being a celebrity <laughs> chef, his recipes are very good. It's, he seems Jamie, like a nice guy. Is like, he a nice guy? He is a nice guy. Yeah, I and hope he's so. very he's like the TV, Yeah, he seems TV. like he's the TV nice guy. It's, I, I've always loved Jamie Oliver's like TV shows. Like I really like his and his his philosophy of cooking. And I've always been really disappointed that like all his cookbooks seem to be these like big kind of glossy uh uh, really fa not fancy but sort of overly produced thing where it's like whereas his the kind of his philosophy of food is very much like let's make some food to you know have your friends over and kind of eat whereas for some reason how he produces his cookbooks is like seems very uh, uh overly fancy which annoys me mm -hmm. I, I feel i feel like a lot of people feel like when you're doing a cookbook you have to like go on display. You have to make the fanciest food available. You have to put in like 18 different spices that you gotta go to a specialty store to get. Because if you're putting it down in a book, you better make it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Why would you put something like this in a book? It's like, because not everybody knows how to do this. Mm -hmm. And like, yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, like I mean, this is the kind of meal, like a lot of the times, I, I mean, I'm sure there's similar people to me, like me, that like, I'll, I will type into Google like easy, like healthy breakfast or whatever. And they'd be like, let me show you the easiest recipe ever. And it's like avocado infused bacon muffins or like crumpet <laughs> or with cauliflower and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, no, I am talking like sausage. And then maybe you wrap something around the goddamn <laughs> no, no, sausage no, no, bang, bang. and it's good for me. <laughs> you got to take a, a jar and put some peeled oats in there and some fresh See, organic berries and cream and just shake it up the, and put it in the fridge for a week. Yes. The, uh, I uh, hate those recipes. Ugh. What is it? Uh, 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 Dylan Moran has the, uh, you're eating bread uh, dipped in anything ruddier than bread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Yeah, with like the homegrown avocados and like how to make, yeah, it's mm -hmm. just, but it's like I would, I would see something like this, like that you just made online, or mm -hmm. online, right? Mm -hmm. And and I would look at it and be like, well, that seems like it's going to take way too much effort. Mm -hmm. But it clearly does not take that much effort, so it's kind of maybe sort of changing my perspective on looking at recipes online. Mm -hmm. And I think probably the bigger thing is looking for not, not necessarily, um, like what it looks like and more like how many ingredients mm -hmm. are a part of it. That's like, exactly it. Like if you want to keep it simple, if it's less than 10 ingredients, it's going to be straightforward. Mm -hmm. Like everything I did here was super straightforward because like I said, we don't have a full kitchen set up. We don't even have a yeah. sink in here. It's got to be super easy. I, yeah. I, I don't know if but, it's been if it's been said yet already, but the number one thing to do when you're before you're cooking is read the recipe from start to finish. Mm -hmm. it, it might go without saying, but... <laughs> That no, typically, like, I'll look at it and go boop, 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 and, like, as I go down. The old the add the egg, but first, do this. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd also like to, to, to mention, to one of my other favorite sites and sources for recipes, 
If you're interested in, in taking the next step in cooking, mm -hmm. not too more complicated, but understanding better why things taste the way they do, mm -hmm. and busting a lot of myths about cooking, check out Serious Eats, specifically mm. their Food Lab articles. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's turned me into an insufferable cook nerd. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a slow cooker, by the way, Chad. Mm -hmm. I, I am like, I know everybody... slow cookers based on Serious Eats. <laughs> I, I know everybody is like, slow cookers. I don't think slow cookers make very good food. Slow, really? Slow cookers have a use, and they are very good at it. If you need to make something that you don't want to pay attention to, and it needs to stay extreme. You need to keep all of the all liquid, of in. liquid in. Slow cookers are great. Slow cookers are great for soups that mm -hmm. sit there for a while. They're great for, oh my god, best beef stew I've ever made in my life. I make in a slow cooker. But if you need to make something that needs to, uh, to reduce, like a stew or pulled pork, mm. you're going to want to use a Dutch oven inside of an oven <laughs> or a pressure cooker. Yeah, I like, I have made many slow cooker recipes, and I'm always just like, it's fine. <laughs> Paul gets me. <laughs> I just chuck that away. About Dutch oven? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm not in my head. My <laughs> beach acknowledge me. <laughs> Sorry. Slow right. oh, over like, uh, like, uh, slow, like, slow oats are very good in a slow cooker. Then like we're going to get you a nice big Dutch oven. <laughs> they, they They're aromatic. <laughs> Sounds good. I, I just got a Dutch oven for my birthday, and it's so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did Graham give it to you? No, Graham's parents did. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm lucky that my in-laws love me so much. Yeah, to give you a Dutch oven like that. Those things are... <laughs> They're not cheap. <laughs> or easy to move around. <laughs> okay. I'm good. Well... We're adults uh, here. Uh, <laughs> a La Crusette Dutch oven? No, it's not La Crusette. It's like La Destino or yeah, something. Yeah, mine's, I think, uh, Cuisinart. Yeah. It, all it has to be is cast iron coated in Enamel. ceramic, yeah, and that's all it needs to do. Mm -hmm. One uh, mm -hmm. uh, one other small uh, cookbook recipe or, or, or uh, suggestion, um, one that I quite like, um, there's a book called the the stone the stone soup cookbook. Oh, um, that uh, I I got. I don't know. It, it's I think it's even just like a PDF that somebody put out online. But it's it's all five ingredient or less recipes. What a good idea! And uh, so I really like. I mm -hmm. think stone. St yeah, I mean stone soup is sort of a reference to like the, the traditional. The, like, yeah. Well, it, it was like the, the the like super you know super. Uh, uh, lower class mm -hmm. food, I guess, is sort of the idea. Well, it's a, an old. Yeah, it's a, a fake folk tale. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Folk tale. <sighs> All right, so I think we've hopefully given everybody some ideas about where you can start cooking. I'm mean, I, like, I realize I come in here and I always do these super simple recipes, but I like, I, I, I do a lot of like fancier stuff. And honestly, the super simple recipes are honestly more rewarding. I would I mean, love to like just come in and like learn to cook. That's the purpose. That's yeah. the purpose of this program. Is, yeah. So I, if you feel like you could, if you'd like to come back, we'd love to have you and yeah. maybe put you in front of something you've never tried before. Yeah. Oh no, God. I mean, I'd I'd love to be a guinea pig too. <laughs> just feel like I feel like yeah, just like teaching people like more advanced cooking techniques like poaching and braising and stuff like that. I, and I was looking through the things I wanted to, uh, to to bring on here today and it was like, and they all take more than 3 hours of, of time after the fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. Caramels need to cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and custard hopefully, needs to set. Yeah, I ho and hopefully Lynn, the nice thing is that that obviously oyakodon <coughs> is maybe not the healthiest meal in the world, but it's not that bad for you. Which one? Oyakodon. Oh, oh, this yeah. one. Yeah, oh, okay. like the, the the soup is like so good for you, and this is very good for you. Oyakodon is more like a comfort food. Oyakodon, oh, the way you're cooking it, is not unhealthy at all. No, because I've, I I have cut out some of the sugar, which I think helps a little bit. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. The, I mean, I guess the, the salt is not great, it's but it's quite not yet. bad. I mean, like granted, Japanese cooking is salty though, right? Yeah. yeah. Granted, my my roommate is like a CrossFit like like guru. Like that's, that's what true. he does for like four or five hours a day. But uh, he, he holds very much true and tries to continuously ingrain it in me that it's like if you bought the ingredients and like you know where they came from <clears throat> and you're making it yourself, mm -hmm. it's going to be healthy. Mm -hmm. It's right? so, Yeah, because what you don't see in restaurant kitchens 
like in a in a in a fast food kitchen, it's just grease. Everything is fried. Mm -hmm. They just like do it on like a big like fry top in the back. Yeah. And what you don't see in high end kitchen is just butter, 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 yeah. butter. Because that's why high end food tastes so rich and delicious because it's, <laughs> there's so much butter in it. And then once you start knowing what to taste for, you're like, oh, this is so bad. And then when you cook at home, you're like, I can't believe it's not butter. Well, and when you took it, when you cook at home, you had like a teaspoon of butter, and you're like, too much. Well, okay, no, I'm not adding more than that. Never too much. Yeah. Yeah. Let me um, tell you about the butter bell. Oh. Oh yeah. It's can, I, can you get us another plate, Beige? Sure. Just it's for our salad. The butter bell is how you keep your butter. Nice and soft on a countertop, so you don't keep it refrigerated. So you're using real butter on your sandwiches. I just I have just a butter margarine. dish mm -hmm. with a lid. I have, yeah. But also, yeah, that's another thing. Get a butter dish or a butter bell or some sort of butter storage yes. device and start, start using butter start instead of margarine. Start using butter. <laughs> right. It's yes, it's more expensive, but it's not that much more expensive. You can buy, like I buy generic Save On Foods house brand butter because mm -hmm. it's four dollars a pound. Butter goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Cheapest butter I can get, but it, as long as it's literally butter with salt in it, I'm all the way there. So when you're when you're buying butter specifically, like mm -hmm. cooking wise, mm -hmm. you buy like those like the cooking butter ones. You don't buy like, or no. do you buy like the spreadable like. No, 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 just, no I, you I, just I, buy I, butter. Box. Yeah. Okay. A block yeah. of butter, and you put it in a thing. Right. Uh, <laughs> when should you buy salted, non-salted butter? Um, some baking recipes call for like. Salt, unsalted butter. I always go for salted butter, I and then if the baking recipe calls for salt, I just take it. I have mm -hmm. never used salted butter in a. I, or I've never not used salted butter in a baking recipe that calls for unsalted butter and had it turn out bad. No, because mm -hmm. it's not usually that salty. Yeah. I don't buy unsalted butter. I know that some people like it. I don't think it's. I like. Like I said. Salted butter in every cooking Should recipe. Be aware that your butter has salt in it, Actually, so maybe add less salt. There was a time when I didn't buy salted butter, but that was during the time in my life when I was springing for, for cultured butter. Ooh, what is... Cu cultured butter is, is butter with an active uh, culture in it, oh. much like yogurt. So mm -hmm. it, it gives you a slightly tangier and a more interesting taste. So you're eating the bacteria. Yeah. So yeah. You, it, it means you don't need to add salt to add more flavor to it. Right. Um, if you're down in New Zealand and Australia, and you can get a clarified butter. It's great for cooking because mm -hmm. they've taken the milk solids out so it doesn't smoke at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. can buy ghee, which is very similar, but not quite the same, according to my dad, who's mm -hmm. cooked with both. But mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're making Indian food, you definitely want to be using ghee. Right. <laughs> also, browning butter is a thing that we need to talk about oh in the future. Oh my god, we should do brown butter pasta. Uh, ooh, well, let me tell you. The other recipe I was thinking of for the brown butter is the 24-hour brown butter chocolate chip cookies. It almost looks like a pizza. Look at what, it. What, what you should do is... It uh, smells like a pizza. Next year, during for the Le Mans, <laughs> you start the start the cookies yep. and also start ah. driving at the same, same time. time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you cook long enough like me... And then me, you'll be finished and you'll also have cookies at the end. <laughs> if, you, if you cook long enough, you'll start to get the cooking psychic sense. Ian has it. You just know when things have been in for long enough to be done. I just tested this chicken, because of course I don't want to feed us raw chicken. We look at it, we can see that it's very juicy, and it's totally cooked yeah. all the way through. But it's still quite, it's still soft, it hasn't gone rubbery yet, mm -hmm. like chicken does. Mm -hmm. You can sort of pull oh, it apart. That thigh. It's nice, that's totally cooked all the way through, but there's still white juices coming out. Ooh. Yeah. That's the important thing. <coughs> all right, Ben. This is, I literally eat this like maybe three times a week. Okay. This maybe won't be the best salad because uh, it's sort of, sort of been sitting out for a bit. But are so you... again, there's no no real seasoning on this except for salt, eh? Uh, no, it's just salt and vegetables and olive oil. Mm -hmm. so but you... I, I scooped the oyakudon out with this. This will be okay. Yep. I didn't bring a serving spoon. <laughs> do do do! Isn't this dramatic? Isn't this exciting? Yeah. Isn't this like such beautiful? Serving, it looks so good. You got these wilty vegetables, and then we got some chicken. some chicken, some of which has been cut up, some of which hasn't. That's it. So you don't use like dressing or anything like that. No, because there's chicken juices and olive oil and all yep. sorts of stuff. Dig in, my friend. All right. That's it. We're done. Yep. Wait, let me. There's a fork and knife for you. Let me take this back out of the way. 
slide that. Or are you going to dish yourself out somewhere? Oh, I'm going to wait till Ben tastes it. Okay. Do you All right. That, uh, that red bowl uh, out of the way, just in that wide shot, it's sort of blocking the table. Ah, that one on the front. Hmm. All right, I'm going to get some. Uh, I am done with that. Some pepper in there, oh, some you. leaf, some tomato. Some chicken. Eh, trying to get it all in one big thing. Oh, please put actual spices on your food. Now I have to taste it though, because now I'm like, how good did this turn out? It's really good. <laughs> it's so simple. It's <laughs> a lot better than eating cold, cold damn lettuce with cold damn chicken. <laughs> And some Caesar dressing over it. This is a lot mm -hmm. nicer. I really like this. Yeah. Wait, I, was, I just want to taste the tomatoes and see how they turned out. They actually they're, taste, they're really good. And I'm typically not oh, a tomato yes. person. Yeah. That's perfect because you brown mm -hmm. them. Because mm -hmm. you blister them first, Jesus. they have a very good flavor. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that you. You have unlocked every bit of umami in that. Every bit of glutamate in that tomato. Tomatoes mm -hmm. are so good if you broil them first. Mm -hmm. They are so good. I thought I hated tomatoes. No. A broiled tomato, and then with a little bit of olive oil and salt. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, I know there are other spices, but like, do you are you like in a situation where you only have salt and you don't want to go out and like spend a bunch of money buying spices that you're not sure what taste what you taste like or like? Mm -hmm. Just this is fine. It's hard. Salads are hard to eat. <laughs> they are hard to eat. I mean, there's a knife here too, mm. and because there's the juices of the onion, there's the juices of the bell pepper. Yeah. There's lots of there's lots of flavor here. There is here. no there's no dry leaves really that I'm getting. Yeah. Like the leaves are dry, but then you get them all together with all the stuff. Do you yeah. know what I, do you I know forgot what I, to bring pepper. Uh, pepper would be fantastic. Do you yeah. know what I would do to put this right? Sorry. You could do some cheese. I'm gonna do. To, yeah, I was just gonna say to put this right over the top. Grate some fresh uh, parmesan. Grate some fresh. Crumble some blue some goat cheese. Ooh, yeah. Uh, not blue cheese, goat cheese. A little bit of goat cheese would be good here. Mm -hmm. And yes, the salad is getting a little wilty, but not as wilty as you think. It's not like the leaves are cooking. They're just softening up, and they're sort of even releasing their own delicious flavors. And yeah, it's just veg. It's it's just nice vegetables mm -hmm. cooked. If you like mustard seed, if you like paprika, is very good on this. Tahine, which is like a Mexican seasoning that you can buy mm -hmm. with like salt and chili and some lime. Delicious. What are the greens in the salad? This is uh, my pre bagged salad mix I buy. This is tender ruby red greens mixed with baby spinach. It's a 50 50 mix. $5 for a big clamshell at the store. Also, this trick of taking vegetables, mm -hmm. roasting them on a pan in the oven, and then doing your meat on top of them? With, with, with olive oil and, well, with olive oil and salt. One of my favorite go to dishes in the winter. Mm -hmm. Is grabbing root vegetables and just cutting them up into big hunks, tossing them in olive oil and salt, and then just baking them until the onions caramelize on the on the pan. It's zero effort, and it is almost like candy. I need a carrot or an onion like that, or a piece bits of garlic, beets. Mm. Roots. I really like lettuce. I know that some people are like, meh, lettuce. I, I, li I don't yeah. like want to eat just lettuce. I mean, I guess we did that Loading Ready Live where I literally ate a head of lettuce but and we I was were fine with it. But we were fine with that because it's not bad. No, it's nice. It's a little, it's got some nice flavor. Yeah. It's kind of boring, it's kinda boring to eat a whole. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a really nice texture to it. It's a receptacle. Yeah. So feel free to experiment with seasoning and spices when you make a dish like this. Oh, a little oregano on this would be just fine. Oh, fresh basil. Oh, God, yeah. Because I have basil, my giant basil plant at home, so I do a lot of fresh basil. Oh, but nice. like, the thing is, you can make this way fancier, but just the bare minimum of chopping up some vegetables that you like to eat, such as bell pepper, onion, and tomato, which are all very good vegetables, and they are inexpensive, which is another thing. Mm -hmm. but a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of salt, a good pinch of, of coarse salt, throwing it in the oven under the broiler for about, I would say about 10 minutes, but check until they get a little like, because you see there's some like blackened bits here. That It actually adds, man. Yeah, no, that's like that's flavor. Mm -hmm. That is the good. The blackness stuff. is flavor. Mm -hmm. okay. And then knock that down to 350. Throw in some chicken thighs. 20 minutes, or until done. I would say 20 minutes at 350. This I was a little bit more like. Because uh, we don't know the oven. Mm -hmm. If I we knew the, the oven, oven, we'd be able to. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, can you imagine just a couple sprigs of fresh rosemary in at the tossing stage? Absolutely. Like you could do. There's many ways that you can dress this up. I just wanted to show. 
I wanted to show a recipe that didn't requ require somebody going to the store and buying eight things yep. that they wouldn't have on hand. Yeah. This is and this is just the starting point. Exactly. Like like I said with the cauliflower soup, you could add many things to it. You can take that technique and do a different kind of soup. You could add different meats to this. Yeah, pork chops are good. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit drier. I really actually really think I think I'm all yeah, I'm all chicken about chicken thigh. thigh. Chicken, chicken thigh is I think the best, best part iteration of, of this. Yeah. Um, but like if you don't like chicken, uh, if you are a vegetarian, you could just do this with just different vegetables. Throw in mm -hmm. some starchy vegetables, you know, uh, or throw in some tofu. Yep. Right? A little like, firm tofu on top of this would be mm -hmm. pretty mm -hmm. good. Like you won't even like it's and like yeah, your vegetables are in the oven for half an hour, all things told, mm -hmm. but they're nicely cooked. They're not overcooked, despite that, because they are going in raw, and they're just like, yeah, take this, do it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, like I know everybody's like, you should be marinating your meat, you should be doing this, why aren't you using other seasoning? Generally, you're marinating your meat because the meat is t will get too dry because of the cooking process. Well, and there, oop, there's a big part of it, too, for, again, like a big, a big part of what, where we're doing this one, is people like me who I'm like I don't want to go and like you know take a piece of meat and then put it like in in the marinade and all that jazz and then put it in my freezer or put it in my uh, fridge and like you know do something with it a day or two from now mm -hmm. or whatever because I don't often have that luxury. I'm gonna put this plate away. From <laughs> I don't often have that luxury, kind of a thing, right? Yeah, yeah and it's just or I just don't want to because I'm lazy, <laughs> I guess, yeah. and I don't have that much investment into the the thing. So it's just like. Um, something like this that is just nice and easy. You step into it. I, you, you can pick up this stuff yeah. on like I can pick this stuff up on my way home from the moon base at like because I'm on my way past mm -hmm. the local grocery store, and it's like it's nice and easy. It's a very European thing that I've bought into of just buying the groceries yeah. on the day mm -hmm. yeah. when you need them. Yeah. And that way they're always fresh. And look at how scalable this is, this recipe is. Mm -hmm. You can cook it for two or three people, or you can scale it back to just one person. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Yeah. Like, yes, not the fanciest thing. Yes, no, there are this. many ways that you can prove it. But as is, as presented, these are very edible things that you yourself can do with a minimal amount of effort. Most of the effort for most of these things, aside from the ayakodon, which is quite hands-on for about five to ten minutes, yeah. mm -hmm. the most of the time of actually the cooking is you could be literally, like I say, watching a sh like watching a half-hour show on Netflix. And uh, go go do something for twenty minutes. And a heck of a lot better than a TV dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And cheaper too. Oh, Way yeah. cheaper than takeout. There's a sense of accomplishment that I imagine that comes alongside with it, as opposed to you know. Mm -hmm. yep. There's yeah. also because there's I could just there is also a McDonald's on my way home, you know, and it's just as easy to stop in and grab some nuggies. So. Yay! Yay! Ben, did we help? Did yes, we... thank you very much. I'm. We did it. Yes, I I think I will definitely be eating these more often. Perfect. You're gonna you're gonna find out that I've just had a rotation of the three dishes. <laughs> well, then we're gonna have, then have, have you on to do more of them. Then I you could increase do your worse. repertoire. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would love to uh, to come on in, next time in a, in another edition of Ben learns to cook. Next time we'll teach you miso soup. Oh yeah! Oh, that also takes like five minutes. I know. Yeah, I'd love how to learn to make like pho and stuff like that, and, and a lot of Vietnamese dishes and stuff. Pho is very dependent we do, on like, having good broth. We do yeah. like we travel the world. I can't world. do that. <laughs> I, I would. Yeah, I wouldn't do pho. No? no, no, no. It's it's it's, it's like ramen unless you got the unless you've got a lot of time and and in effort to do the broth properly. Mm. It's. I can teach you how to hack ramen. Ah, hack ramen, <laughs> hack the planet. I mean, like, I I did hack oyakudon. Yeah. As in, like, this is, this is not good, but it's good enough. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So that's going to bring this episode of Tinker Taylor Solder Fry to a close. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. We learned a lot. We ate some, and it was delicious. And I'm going to have another tomato there because it's too good. Yeah, you didn't mm. have any of this. Oh, I was talking. I'm going to have some once we go offline. Right. But I would love to thank everyone who joined us tonight for tuning in and showing your support by just watching, participating in the chat. And to those of you especially who gave us a subscription here at twitch.tv slash loading ready run, and those of you who... All right, we're doing subs. Give me that food. Yeah. Helped us out at patreon.com slash loading ready run. We appreciate all of you, and we would especially like to thank those of you there. Cthulhu Wept, who is a brand new subscriber. Thank you so much. And as is also a new subscriber, welcome to the channel. It's 
Andrea, who is a brand new Patreon just supporter. Just yeah, just let me eat. Yeah, yeah, we'll take a dicey for 14 months saying cooking time. Thank you very much. It's Pixelated Painter for 15 months saying very apropos for the students on a frozen food binge for finals week. Not that I know anything about that. <laughs> Grandpa. It's Jordan Steele for 13 months saying, ah, 13 months. That's the spooky number. Oh, but not as spooky as Enigma Helper, who is subscribed for 42 months. That's the That's secret to use. Like, the like thing to say. Yeah. The Angels Week for 23 months saying, why do we give Ben the knife again? Yeah. We make a lot of mistakes. Lumlight is a 47 month subscriber saying, who okay, gave Ben a knife? I'm 25 years old. <laughs> no, Whedon Project for 14 months saying, who let Ben have a knife after the Let's Nope incident? What Let's Nope incident? I brought a knife into this stream. JR Random Hacker for 19 months saying, time to craft along making custom foam core trays for my board games. Hey, that sounds cool. Kumatsu for 13 months saying, hit that reset button on Ben's face twice in one day. Truly a December weed miracle. Thank Double you very much, Double dipping on Ben. Nice. Yeah. Darth Whooper is a 22 month subscriber saying, anything with cauliflower in it is automatically suspicious. Mm. Hopefully we prove you wrong. Lord Vaughn Atlantis is a brand new subscriber. Welcome to the channel, friend. And Fila Seth has subscribed for 46 months so far. Thank you. Christ for 17 months saying two subs to a Ben stream in one day. Awesome. Also, please be careful with the knife. I'm always <laughs> careful. This is a theme. Kinpatsu has subscribed for 14 months. Food. Uh, Grand Lama Q for 38 months saying cooking with nerds. Yay. That's exactly what this is. Mm -hmm. Scappas for 25 months. Thank you. And snapped like at Wix Bar is a brand new subscriber. Welcome. Awful. <laughs> Neutral for three months. Mmm, recipes uh, that are Alex with it's, healthy. It's your BFF, Demigod Chaos, for eight months. Welcome back. Bits19 is subscribed for 17 months. Thank you, Bits19. I'm going to cook a nice meal for Kayadar for 16 months. Say two by two by two by two months. W -w 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 what? Beware the pickle has subscribed for nine months, saying, I guess today I'm having a food sub baby. Nice. Jessikins is a brand new subscriber. All these new friends, welcome to the channel. Couldn't pick a username, says, with their 15-month subscription. Somebody once told me life is like a hurricane. She was looking kind of dumb here in Duckburg in the shape of race cars, lasers, airplanes on her forehead. Well, the years start coming, you might solve a mystery. Didn't make sense That's not to rewrite history. <laughs> That's so wow. good. Revenant 77X for 10 months saying, hashtag Team Chewy Bacon. That's Ooh. right. No. The Shame Granny for 10 months. Ian Horner, <laughs> just what are you teaching that young impressionable plaid boy to do with those vegetables? Shameful. <laughs> Love the shame, Grant. Sheldy P for three months saying, great, now I need to make so many soups. Thank you for making me so hungry. I'm excited to make this soup. And Fox Dilemma is a brand new subscriber. Thank you, Fox Dilemma. Sketch Layer Josh is also a brand new subscriber. Welcome to the channel. Doc Awesome Games for 19 months. Iridium Alchemist is also a brand new subscriber. So many new friends. Buck minced for four months. I'm hungry. When's dinner? It was before. <laughs> a penile perplexion for eight months. Viking <laughs> Engineering. 15 months. And Ellen for 28 months saying subscribe onion facts. Why have we never been doing this like the East West Bowl? Yeah, just host it draw for 11 months. Jethal, new subscriber. Ill fuzzy, 48 months. I don't know what's going on, but I'm sure it's rad. Rad. Shokaru, Shakara Ra, <laughs> 17 months saying, yay, cooking, I killed that. I'm oh, sorry. Affinity for fun has subscribed for five months saying, I. And we'd like to thank. For thanks for 926 bits. And gesture to me because I'm done eating. Yeah. Yeah. Further than one, counter zero, or count zero, Mercer Man, that troll with the horns. Carfsma 778, Asian Insect, Rock Pusher, and Valhalla Knight. If you made any of these dishes and they turned out well, please tweet at the Loading Ready Run account or share it in our Discord. Yeah. Yes. We'd love to see your results. And if you're just kind of checking us out for the first time and you want to hang out in a super awesome community, go check out our Discord. Mm -hmm. And make sure to hit that subscribe button up top or the follow button. The follow button. The follow, yeah, I mean, hit, subscribe helps us. Hit, hit but the follow button. The follow one's free. Then yeah. decide if you want to subscribe. Yeah. Then, then please subscribe if you do want to subscribe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Follow, follow though, and you'll see more stuff like this. Maybe not stuff like this like tomorrow. We don't do cooking streams every day, but we do all sorts of random cool stuff, and yeah. it's great. But that does bring us to the end of our broadcast day here at Loading Ready Run. Paul, what is tomorrow? 
I'll tell you what's tomorrow. Oh, snap, it's Paul doing things. Tomorrow, I'm playing some Okami. Woo! Hell yeah. Okami HD. Uh, I'm super stoked about this. This was a game uh, I had a lot of fun playing on uh, PS2 originally, Mm -hmm. and it was very pretty on PS2. Mm -hmm. What's it on now? And now it's on everything. It's on PC, it's on uh, Switch, it's on... PS4 and it's on Xbox One. I'll probably be playing it on PC, and I presume at you know four times the resolution, it will be four times the prettiness and four times the enjoyment. <laughs> You'll learn four times more about the Japanese prehistory then too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we got uh, one more uh, where they're doing the new Destiny 2 raid. Yeah, it's mm. going to be like... PC or... PC. Uh, it's PC. PC, so it's going to be like... PC James, team. Yeah, James, myself... Cameron. Uh, Cameron, I think Alex might be coming. I think I'm switching over to the PC. Uh, uh, Graham did. <laughs> Graham's the PC is not built yet. But he's going to be. <laughs> PC Destiny, it's where it's at. But yeah, we're going to be checking out the brand new raid. Uh, it's going to be super, super fun for <laughs> any of you guys who have uh, checked out our ones in the past. You know that uh, this first one, we tend to try and like this one. I believe is we're doing it blind, um, so we're kind of going to try and figure out <laughs> everything as we see. Yeah, I guess Ben will be blind going into it. I, I, who knows about the other? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've been so far off the Destiny train. I think the only reason I'm going to be able to come is because like I they need a sixth. Yeah, well, I also like I got like a decently high light level before I stopped playing for a little while. So good, good. Yeah. Uh, and then we got some let's nope. Going on on Wednesday. No, uh, no mine o'clock on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, um, James is busy and Rebellious Uno is also not around. So, yeah. no mine o'clock, but it's some let's nope. Yeah, mm-hmm. Graham, Graham's also going to be busy, so uh, we won't be able to do the watch and play. But uh, Alex and I are going to figure out a game. Um, we were considering playing Hello Neighbor. Uh, but but apparently we have, it's quite bugged. Apparently there. it has so many bugs in it that you can actually soft lock yourself just by losing too many times. <laughs> so uh, we're going to stay away from that. Um, we've got a couple of ones uh, in the hopper. Don't um, suggest anything to Alex on Twitter. Yes, don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't, don't do it that way. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. That, um, I have a couple of ones suggested. So yeah. You have a plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we got AFK on Wednesday mm-hmm. night. I think we finally decided yeah, what it is. Yeah, we finally decided. We're going to be playing Mangaka, mangaka. again. Oh. With Beige and Heather and Ian. Mm-hmm. But the Mangaka people are making a follow-up game, which is on Kickstarter right now. So they sent us a bunch of brand new cards from the sequel. Please tell me it's Manwaka. It's cartooner, okay. actually. So it's like not as it's, it's not, not manga themed. <laughs> As 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 much right. Hmm. So uh, we're doing so. Uh, AFK's manga cup. People oh are excited. Oh my god, manga cup. Yeah, so, looks like uh, most of the Weeb team is assembling for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel bad. I can't be there for that, but uh, it's gonna be. I, it's a fun, I can't. It's a fun time. I'm very like self conscious about my drawing skills. <laughs> but the I thing is, suck. the yep. thing is, the game you don't need to be able to draw to win at the game. Really? Yeah. There's no artistic judgment. It's like, are you meeting the requirements in it? Okay. So, like, it's it's well designed. Hmm. If you can convince the other people that what you drew was indeed the thing. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Just like real comics. Hmm. All right. Uh, then we got 18 games and counting, which uh, I believe I'll be solo running that one on uh, uh, on Thursday because mm-hmm. uh, James will be uh, down at the charity dinner. But. Uh, and then LRMTG will probably not be James and Graham. It's me and Cam, I yeah, think? Yeah, it's you and Cam. Yeah, Cam wow. and I, we're back. The salty Ooh. team that always loses on stream together. I, I liked it when we were together. It was uh, you and I, team. Yeah, you and I did great. We were happy. Cam and I are cursed when we take over <laughs> LRMTG. So it's going to be funny. So <laughs> tune in for that. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, uh, Graham and James often lose as well. So. <laughs> that does make me feel better. <laughs> Talking Simulator, they're going to be doing some more Soma. Going to be working their way through that game. Uh, and then we got the Crapshoot as uh, as standard on the Fridays. And LRMTG, where we're going to be doing... Unstable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Unstable roll, draft. Roll back. We figured that, uh, you know, it's... Uh, unstable isn't going to be the new hot thing for... Ever, so we might as well do it while we can. Mm-hmm. We and, got a fresh uh, box. 
We got uh, going to be doing so. If you if you liked the draft uh, on last week with the uh, uh, the pre pre release, mm-hmm. uh, this will be uh, yeah a little bit more. It'll be just lure folks, so a little bit more intimate setting perhaps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, and we'll also it that'll will be, be no less monstrous, I'm sure. And you'll also actually uh, we'll actually be doing the draft on camera as well. Um, so that'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. And if you did enjoy all the uh, unstable stuff that we did on the weekend, we've got a whole layer of videos coming yeah, out. Oh, a yeah, a couple of them, have, or one of them already went up. Graham interviewed Maro <laughs> about unstable and stuff. That's on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash loadingreadyrun. So you can check that out if you liked unstable. Uh, and then, is that is that all, all in for our slides? I think uh, Yeah, I, it, it keeps oh, going, yeah. but... Uh, uh, it it because I think the 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 uh, the future becomes more sh- hazy, more vague, yeah. hazy more as vague. we go forward. So walk into the. Uh, although uh, I believe we are currently on schedule for, for doing uh, our Christmas loading ready live, our loading, December doing loading ready live uh, on, holiday uh, edition. This yeah, we're doing it early because we're all leaving <laughs> during <laughs> Christmas. Like we all every have families to see. Yeah. Um. So. I'm going to call that a show. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone, again. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for being here. Thank you for letting me lecture you on how to make food. I loved it. Oh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, Sidewalk Slam just went up, too. Yeah, great new one. Amazing. That's all Ben. And North 100. So lots of great content there that you can watch and or listen to while you're cooking. Go Mm -hmm. raid Sidewalk (laughs) Slam. Yeah. See you guys in a fortnight. Bye. Thanks for joining. Ever forward. Sometimes Never learning. learning. <laughs> Sometimes learning. I think we learned a lot tonight. <laughs> Sometimes we learn. <laughs> Sometimes. Give him the spoon. Wait, do you want a knife? Hold on. Yes, I want a knife. Give me the knife. <laughs> that one has a.